Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today is a very special day as we are doing the YouTube recording for the Path of Exile 3.25 Righteous Fire Chieftain campaign run. So that's Act 1 through Act 10. Now if you've never used my content before, don't forget about my website. Essentially all you are going to have to do here is we're going to yoink the League Start right here. And you can also yoink the Loot Filter right here to follow along in the video. The name of the loot filter may end up changing. I modify some things, but it's most likely this one right here up at the top. You can see the one with the most amount of followers. Okay, so remember, if you ever get stuck, you can always come over here to my website um, in regards to like the FAQ. The FAQ can help you a lot. For example, a lot of people struggle with like dexterity in the later stages. You can search dexterity, click it, and then you get your answer, right? <laughs> With that being said though, after we click the RF Chieftain League start right here, we're gonna go ahead and get access to Path of Building, assuming you have that. From here, all you gotta do is click Import and go ahead and click this. This is gonna beam the actual uh, leveling guide for you. For people who don't have Path of Building, you can just follow along with the run, but I don't follow my POB one for one because that's too time consuming for me. I just kind of play and explain as I go, right? I promise when you play a build like 400 times, you don't need a guide anymore, I, I, I promise. Okay, so over here, there is a nice loadout feature. What this is gonna do is this is gonna make it so that while you're leveling, you're gonna change the drop down. So like say you're, you're level 20 and you just hit 21 and you wanna know where to go next, right? You're gonna go ahead and click this and this is gonna move over your items, which do have some info on them and the skills, which is the very important part. Speaking of the skills, there is one, one thing that I know people don't enjoy with this build, and that is that I mule a witch first. So what that means is I level another character. It takes about five to 10 minutes maximum and gets you bonus loot. For people who are playing a league start, you don't have to worry about going into queue because we just hit log out to character and then we're actually fine. For people who want to try out the new melee skills for leveling, you can absolutely do that. The reason I'm not showcasing melee is I can't play on the 3.25 patch yet, so it would not really be the most consistent gameplay. So with that being said, we're going to just go through this. You can see it says tip level a witch to four to get these gems. you got to complete these two quests, which I'll show you. And then you can see the gems that we're going to be yoinking from the witch. Most of these only cost a wisdom, and a lot of them are optional, such as the holy flame totem setup. You don't really need this. This is optional, right? Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and just start and hit create. And we're going to start with a witch. Why do the king of my Oops, Daisy. I don't know. I didn't even know you could open up your options on that tab. All right. So then I want to make sure we're on the right loot filter. So I'm going to be on my campaign filter. This will most likely say 3.25 if you're following it in 3.25, right? Dead will soon rise for me, not against me. Now these runs are designed to be done with no gear and nothing. That way, people who are following along have the most accurate experience possible. I don't like using any leveling gear or any of that stuff because I don't really think that that, it's not really accurate, right? So which is a little squishy, make sure you don't just like face tank the guy. All you really have to do is kind of just run back, like literally as you see here. A very easy hillock kill. And then use your MP potion when you're like kind of low. If you use it when you're like full MP, you might actually run out. Probably not, but it could happen. Make sure you pick up all of the loot here. So none of these things are useful for me, except for this wand. The wand gives spell damage, so we'll just equip that. And you want to just sell this. You don't actually want to identify blue items that are not good for you the reasoning is you're going to need these transmutations later so we're just going to vendor that now in the path of building there is this little line of text which i may be updating you see this here this is actually very important for this build and all it's going to do at the beginning is highlight intelligence and movement speed gear you might not find it right away but we'll keep we'll keep referring to this and i'll explain so we're going to grab rolling magma and then i'm going to just type in this here and nothing highlighted, so we can actually move on. In my uh, regex, I might actually put also three blue, as blue, blue, blue is very ideal for this build, but 
It's okay. It's not a super big deal. Stay sharp out there. Okay. And then over at Nessa, if you want a little bit extra help, you could just kind of browse through and see if you get something lucky. Like this has plus one physical. Now, obviously you won't have an elk right away, but if it had like plus one fire, that would help you a lot. We're going to go ahead and just move on. So let's go. Take care. Okay, so I'm going to replace rolling magma with the fireball, and I'm just going to ditch that fireball. We don't want that. Just like my sisters upon the pyre. Am I going the wrong way? Is it actually over here? No, I was going the right way. Shit. This is what happens when you haven't played PoE in two months. So one of the next things to do... Oh, iron ring. You'll notice there's going to be a lot of, like, flashy colors on the filter. Um, these are meant to make it so that you can't screw up the early game. So iron rings later are going to be used to create ruby rings, which are important specifically for the RF swap. So it's not something we need now, but you want to try to hold two iron rings to the side for later. The more the better. It's not a big deal, though, once you get two. Now, over here on the side, you'll notice that the rolling magma is leveling. Personally, I think you can put one level into it before the Juggernaut or Marauder, sorry, Chieftain's unable to use it. I just like to disable that so I don't accidentally level it. And then you just have to remember to do that again on the other character. We'll explain that as we go, don't worry. So same thing with Arcane Surge. I'm just going to right-click and right-click. When you right-click these items or these skills, they're going to go down here. Uh, and that way you cannot accidentally level them up. And again, the reasoning for this is we're going to give these skills to the Chieftain um, that we're going to be leveling, and he doesn't have enough hint to use them at higher level. And also just because if we're leveling it, he's going to need higher level anyway, right? Now, entering here is one of the most rippy parts, Mudflats. Right away, right here, the reason this part is rippy is these Roas just do insane damage. So if you die a couple times, don't feel bad. It happens to a lot of people. We're actually already towards the end of the, the witch run right here. All we have to do is do two more zones. Well, actually, one more zone after this, really. Grab that. Like this. we got to go grab our three little things in mud flats here. Also, the mobs here are angrier because I'm playing in Necropolis still. So they have all the angry buffs from Necropolis. So it should be even easier, like, times two, right? It's another nice thing. Necropolis was definitely a very difficult league. Okay, Coral Rings are actually awesome. I'm going to pick that up. Those are base life. So I'm going to just grab that, get the armor scrap, and continue. Actually, you're right. Just kidding. Necropolis is actually gone. I lied there. This is actually just standard now. Forgot that they removed it yesterday. Another armor scrap. Armor scraps are actually even stronger in the patch right now because now at low level... They're going to give you 20% quality on your items, which is actually fantastic. It really is. You don't have to worry too much about killing these, because remember, we're not like playing this character long term, right? So I'm kind of just looking for where we need to go, and that's actually going to be right here. I'm just going to take that blue to sell. Grab this. And let's move on. So remember that regex we had? We're going to go ahead and post that again. So I'm just going to put in... doesn't matter if you go cast speed or spell damage here. So over here, we're going to grab flame wall. And then we're going to grab frost blink. And I'm just going to put that right here. Okay. Now we're going to go back and post that little weird regex. And nothing highlighted. And I'm just going to check for uh, blue, blue, blue. I don't think I see anything. And then we're just going to go ahead and check over here. There is actually a blue, blue, blue goat horn for only one wisdom, so I will grab that. Goat horns are ideal when you are a little higher level because they provide flat damage. And flat damage is far superior to any other form of scaling, uh, for casters at least at the beginning. So we're just going to stick with that, and now we're going to go end this character. So what I mean by end this character is quite literally we're going to go to the coast, and we're going to go kill Hailrake. And then the character is done. Oh, that's true. I do need to go look. So there is 
There's one other thing now. I don't think I looked at the vendor uh, specifically for an int amulet. So what we're going to do to be, again, a little extra safe, right, for the newer players, is every time you level up, the vendors get a few more things in the shop. So you can play it safe and just get level 5 on the witch, and then you can go check one more time, because again, it only takes a minute or two and then you're done, right? Ooh, boots. I'm going to pick those up. I'm actually going to identify these, only because they have two blues and they could have movement speed. No movement speed. Still two blues, though, which is nice. All right. Now, at this point, you can log out to character selection. You will not be put into queue. Um, I don't... I'm going to grab a Quicksilver. I'm going to go ahead and grab Elemental Prolif. And now, just to be a little bit extra safe, let's go grab that Hello. one extra level, because why not? Goodbye. So we're just going to knock out literally this level at 50%, and then we're going to go check the vendors again. Also, Elemental Prolif is far better than Arcane Surge here. Ellie Prolif is kind of what makes Rolling Magma a lot better, combined with Flame Wall, because you don't really have to aim. You just literally shoot it in a general direction, and the Ignite Proliferation will kill mobs. So, example, if you look here... See this, this circle here? This circle is what does a lot of the clearing for you. All right, that's level five. I'm just going to go to character selection, log back into the character, and post that regex one more time. So we have nothing within tier. We got unlucky, no lapis amulet here. And then we're going to go check over here. And nothing. So sometimes you get unlucky. It's okay. It happens. There is actually boots here with three blue, but they have no movement speed. So it's time to go make our marauder. Let's go. Okay, so, oh boy, um, I didn't think about this. Uh, let's see here. We're going to just uh, hide, remove only tabs. And, uh, hmm, okay. I'm just going to put my stuff, like, right here. Yes. Forgot about all those those tabs and standard. My goodness. This is going to be my little, my little spot right here with all of my nice stuff. Okay, we're going to take off those boots. We're going to take off that coral ring. We're gonna take off this one. I don't care too much about these. The goat horn. This is our nice little spot. Our beauty. Right there. Okay. And let's go ahead and make our marauder. It's time. Do you think you are savage enough to face the land of the damned, marauder? I named my character Jug just because I have too many characters named Chieftain. It'll be a Chieftain now. <laughs> Okay. Their place. Now we're going to hope we get some early intelligence, as if we don't find any int, the leveling is going to be a little rough. And again, it's only for Act 1. And the primary reason is we're unable to use Flame Wall or Frost Blink until we get 16 intelligence. Once you're able to get Flame Wall, your damage goes up so much because of the uh, basically the flat damage it provides Rolling Magma. One thing to note is Rolling Magma is slightly nerfed in the patch. It does have less damage effectiveness at level 1, but as you level it, it will become stronger. So just for the purpose of Act 1, I'm going to be slightly stronger, but remember that you do have the option of leveling melee if you choose to. Melee was recently massively buffed, I'm pretty sure, in the campaign. heck is happening here am i going the wrong way yeah okay i'm supposed to be going this way that's why actually it's because i hit that off there there we go that's like the sloppiest hillock i've ever done i keep missing too what is happening here dude what is happening here dude actually went oom i was making fun of that happening on the witch earlier okay let's go ahead and grab that and we're gonna go vendor now, I think I was kiting him the wrong way, and he kept interrupting my attack. I think that's what was happening. And we're going to keep these two red gems. 
for later. Just get rid of all that. Very good. And of course, we're going to go just peek really fast. These don't matter. We're not using them. We're going to see if we get some early int gear. Nope. Stay sharp out there. All right, let's go ahead and check over here. We're going to go grab everything from that dump tab we had. Beautiful. We're going to equip our wands here so we can't use Ignite Prolifia. Oh, I accidentally leveled it. Oh, wasn't supposed to do that. That's what happens if you level them. Grab our boots and then we'll just use... Do we have Arcane Surge? We do. All right, let's go. So... Primary goal is essentially getting enough in to use our skills. Um, worst case scenario, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You get versatility. That has 20 intelligence on it. I think it's always good to show like worst case scenarios because there's always people who are affected by the worst case scenario, right? Then down here, you want to make sure you start leveling the rolling magma again. Someone always gets the short end of the stick, right? I'm actually going to grab those gauntlets. They have double blue, even though they're white. Let's grab that. So I like to wait on Hail Rig until I have Flame Wall, because he is pretty tanky considering we're just using a almost like a one link rolling magma at this point. I will also kill this blue pack because this is our character we're playing on, obviously, right? If it's fire and ignite res, I'm probably gonna skip it, although usually I want to fight blue packs. They have much better drop rates basically than other ones. Um, so we really wanna see if we can get some intelligence, right? Intelligence is very important here. For players who hate rolling magma, don't forget to continue reading the POB because there is an optional setup you can use with Holy Flame Totem, or as I said before, you can always just level with the newly buffed melee skills. Did we get all of our one, two, I think we're missing one, right? Yeah. We can use this now too. Ooh, another coral ring. Very nice. Alright, let's go. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead, go back to town. Also, for people who are in mudflats, this node right here actually gives you a ton of physical mitigation in the early league because that 30 flat armor can help so much against things like Roas. All right, so since we got a couple of levels, I'm actually going to come back here again and check for early int. I got a, I got a lucky feeling about this one. Sorry, did I say lucky? I meant unlucky. Surely there's a Lapis Amulet right here. Can I just type an int? Can I do that? Nope. I, onward we go! It's the best, actually. I love the runs that are like this. You can actually use the Pro Lift, so we're going to do that instead of Arcane Surge. And let's continue. Normally, by this point, I would be killing Hail Rake, 100%. But for now, we're just going to continue on because our damage is not really where I would like it to be. Um, so this here is an essence. 
Now, the reason I'm, I'm opting to click this essence is because essences can be used as pseudo alchemy orbs. What that means is you can use it to make an item rare, and most of our gear right now is white. So that means there is a chance, for example, that when I use this, I could potentially get some early intelligence. So I'm going to go ahead and use it on maybe this coral ring right here. This one has higher life, so I'll use it on the other one instead. And we got dexterity. Could happen. Could absolutely happen. Normally, when you have your, um, here we go. Normally, when you have your frost blink, uh, this place is a lot safer because you can constantly just maneuver around with frost blink. But when you have no movement skill, it is a lot more rippy, unfortunately. Uh, so we do actually have a portal scroll. I believe this is the uh, dweller area. So we're actually going to go ahead and put a teleport here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to come back to that later because our damage is not where we want it to be right now. So I think maybe over to the right is where we need to go over here. I'm going to kill this blue mob right here. Pattern Helm. Maybe this has end. One of you guys are going to have int. Mark my words, it's going to happen. I refuse to have the worst run possible. We're going to get this. Actually, where are we even going right now? Is this like a weird layout for anyone else? Because usually I don't find it this way. Because usually I have the stairs. So does that mean the stairs are here? Or is this literally a dead end? The stairs have to be here, right? No, that's a dead end. Wow, okay. So then that means... It actually has to be here. I don't usually have this layout. This is kind of crazy. Usually I have this like at the bottom and then I have the stairs this way. The run is so scuffed. It really is. It's crazy how scuffed it is, but that's the thing is that the worst case scenarios will happen to someone. Better it happens to me and give a, you know an explanation of it than it happened to that new player and he doesn't know how to progress now, right? Where's a blue pack? I'm gonna fight this blue pack because it's also tied with the yellow squid here. I need them int drops really badly. Okay, there's a chromatic drop. There's a scale vest. I don't even know if that can roll in, but I'm gonna just ID it because, uh, yep. We'll die in two minutes. Yeah, that's good enough. We, we got most of our kills there. Okay, this guy's almost dead. We'll kill him, too. Crude bow. Pick that up, the vendor. Ah, I didn't pick it up. That's okay. Yeah, I cannot hit him. Okay. So we're going to go hit the waypoint here. And then we're going to go back to town. And we're going to get in here, 100%. 100%, and then the run begins. And then the run officially begins. Oh, another chrome. Take that. Okay, 
It's so weird not having Flame Dash right now, or uh, Frost Blink. I keep getting stuck. That's so weird. Okay, there's our waypoint. This is it. This is it. Here's our intelligence. It's happening. 100% it's happening. Right now, I can feel it. I'm getting smarter by the second. Every step I get closer is in scaling. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So now, we're gonna go and pick up our intelligence gear. Okay. Um... Downside is we're not smart enough to use this intelligence gear. Farewell. That's, uh, and I've never been in that scenario before. And, aha! We got our Lapis Amulet. There we go. Let us rejoice because it's time to play the game. Still now, alive. just in case, I will also buy this, although I don't think I need it. So, now let's clean up our inventory here as we don't need this stuff. Okay, let's get rid of that. We're gonna go ahead and... Oh, I can't even wear this yet. So goat horns, remember I said, are very oh, wow. good. So we're gonna take ignite pro or Ellie Prolif, rolling magma, and then we're gonna grab that arcane surge. We're gonna go ahead and put on frost blink along with flame wall. Yes. We're gonna go get rid of that. I don't want that. This is now ah, we can just get rid of that. Actually, the shield is technically better than this wand because eight spell damage is inferior to twelve. So we're gonna trash that as well. Then we're gonna go ahead and look if there's another goat horn. Two to four is actually like a top roll. That means the minimum rolled the highest and then the top end rolled the highest. So we're gonna grab that as well and we're gonna replace the shield with the double goat horn. If you look at the damage, this is 39.5. If I replace to the shield, it's 30. So the flat damage is very, very strong here. That's why we wanna prioritize that. Okay, now let's go ahead and get to it. You don't really have to worry about the arcane surge leveling. That one is not as important. It's going to get replaced very soon. So now we're going to go ahead and go towards our dweller. Remember, we had our waypoint here originally. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, right after we do this, we're actually going to go and kill Hail Rake. Remember, if you had access to early int here, you could have already done that. We're going to go ahead and do that right after this. We'll just blitz through it. I cannot do this yet. So the goal here is quite literally drop your flame wall and then shoot rolling magma into it. There is like a tech where you can hit the boss twice with it. Don't worry about that. That's when people start to not like it. I say just drop your flame wall and just shoot into it. You're gonna hit the guy, it's okay. It's not a problem. Okay, yet again, we're gonna grab all these nice blue items and I'm gonna log to character selection. And then I'm just gonna trash all of them, unless some of them seem interesting to me. I don't care about the gloves, so we're just gonna trash that. See you later. And then we're gonna get our skill point here. Stay sharp out there. That skill point is gonna go up into versatility. And we're gonna now go back to the coast. And we're gonna go ahead and get our second Quicksilver. Second Quicksilver is going to replace this small mana flask. Although when you get to say like Brutus, who is gonna be one of the later bosses in Mervale, maybe you wanna keep two mana flasks just if you're not very comfortable with how much damage you deal or just juggling your MP flasks. Mana can be a little tight on this build until late game or low, like later on when we just life tap everything, which means it'll cost life instead of mana. Okay. Just grab it all. That's fine. And log in. Okay. There's that, second Quicksilver. I don't actually need any of these, so I'm gonna leave them alone. Now, this is rare, so we're just gonna go ahead and ID that, see what we get. Of course, now we find the intelligence gear, but that's okay. 
39 armor, 15 ES. I'll just keep my current one and vendor that. Take care. Okay, let's go ahead and continue. As a reminder, make sure you have set your gems to level, uh, because remember, on the witch, we wanted we went ahead and disabled those. The only exception is arcane surge. You can level it a few times. You just have to pay attention to the mana cost um, to trigger the arcane surge buff. But again, it's not a big deal. We replace that right away once we get our combustion support. Chain bell. I don't think we have a belt yet, so that gives us some energy shield. There's versatility. I'm gonna grab the medium mana just specifically for like Brutus. Keep that to the side. And then upgrade one of our life flasks with this new one. I cannot do this yet. Augmentation point. Uh, one big thing is if you find any chance orbs, do not use them. We're going to need them to buy gems later. We're not going to worry about that Legion monolith. Also, I'm getting a lot of people who are adding me and asking me questions. I'm kind of not really able to answer the questions right now as we're focusing on a YouTube campaign run. So chat, just help out with that. I like to skip that guy. I don't really care for it. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Okay. The slave is not a man. Equip that helmet the we had. Is not even worthy of death. Here is a lab trial. We're gonna go ahead and get that done. That lore book indicates the lab trial. We're gonna need these later for when we ascend into a chieftain. Lab trial is pretty easy. Um, if you don't want to take damage, you hide in these little pockets here. So like. I'm going to click this. I'm just going to face tank it like this, but you could like hide in the little pocket there if you didn't want to die. This part can be kind of rippy because there's always a rare up here. Um, this guy can be like kind of spooky, so just be careful for him. I'm not gonna get the rest of those because I have these ones done, but I do have to get the ones for Merc Lab and Rule Lab, so I will inform you guys where those are as I'm going through. I don't typically fight the rare Necromancers here, and the primary reason is they use Enfeeble Curse, which lowers your damage. Kinda don't really have crazy damage at this stage, so I don't kill too many of the mobs in prison. Usually, I'm just skipping. Where is Brutus, by the way? Brutus must be on the opposite side, then. If you're like me and you end up full clearing the whole zone, you may as well just hit the mobs as you're running. Oh, blue pack, though. Blue packs are always good. Ooh, okay. Yoink. Thank you very much. And here's the Enfeeble Curse that I'm referring to, lowering your damage. I cannot do this yet. Okay. I 
I know the build feels really weird and weak right now. I promise it gets so much stronger uh, just a little bit into Act 2. So the suffering is almost over. For players who did not mule and decided to level melee, there is a secret little chemist box. You can kind of see it on the minimap. I'm not sure if I'll encounter it, but you'll see it like behind a wall here. Um, you can actually go ahead and pop that. There's a very good chance you get Quicksilver Flasks, I believe. I think it's actually that one right there, maybe. Yeah, you can see, like, right here, there's going to be a switch. You hit the switch, and then over here, you're going to see the chemist box. There you can see the flasks. Pretty cool. Actually, I'll grab a large life. Why not? Do, 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 do. We'll just do that. Do that, and swap it. This pack I'll typically skip because it's fire and ignite resist early game. That's just way too tanky. Okay. We're going to Brutus and we have no flasks, so we probably should portal and refresh that. So, um, yeah, we're going to just do that. Because I have no life flasks and like half of an MP flask. I could try to chat him and see what happens, but I don't think it's going to work out well. Let's see. Also just gonna check the scepter. Okay, that's fine. Do, 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 do. Brutus is pretty simple. Drop a flame wall and just shoot rolling magma. Over and over and over. That's all you do. I frost blink to avoid his ground slam, so there's like one, two, and then three. I actually think I took all those to the face, but yeah. Okay, I'm just going to portal out because we had no flasks. Come back in. Remember, you can set a hotkey for portal, which is really nice. And down he goes. What's our loot? Bronze Scepter... Take the rares. The rares sell for more than the blues, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And since we're literally not using our helmet, we're just going to go ahead and ID this one and slap that over, and we're going to bank that one. I cannot do this yet. It does have int, but we don't need all the int right now, since we got our 20 int from the skill tree. Strength isn't everything, Brute. The rest of our travel points for like the next 10 levels are just strength nodes. And then in Act 2, we finally get to get some damage nodes. That's when it gets much better. Much better. Just think of it, we're getting all the travel nodes out of the way now. Oop. What armor scrap going? That goat is very intimidating with those totems. <laughs> very intimidating. Okay. So here is another part where we can utilize portals to save time. What I try to do right now is I'm trying to get to Mervale's Cavern. 
And if we end up finding the uh, location we need for the extra skill point, we'll drop a portal there. Have no fear, we're gonna go run it anyway, so if we miss it, we miss it, it's okay. That is a chrome, but we have no space, so I'm gonna leave that on the floor. But actually, weren't we supposed to get combustion support after Brutus? I think we were. I need to go back and get combustion support. I forgot about that. Yep, let's go get our damage. Also, we're just going to sell everything here. I will ID the scepter just for later, but it's not a big deal. Also, grab faster attacks now for shield charge. And none of these matter. So let's just get rid of all of that. See ya. We'll keep the helmet. See ya later. I'm going to just put this right over there. That's my special little tab we'll be using. Just to replace that. I think we get combustion now. There's also vitality. Vitality we'll use later. Do you have combustion support? Yes, you do. So we're going to drop Arcane Surge now. If you still want to use it, you can attach it to Frost Blink. And now we're going to go back to Ship Graveyard to go find, uh, to go find that skill point. Do you have your path written? Are you doing everything from memory? I do everything from memory. I don't, uh, I improvise everything. My, my whole life is, uh, basically just improvising. And I'm going to kill this blue pack because blue packs are juicy XP. You can see that once you kill Brutus, Rolling Magma becomes way stronger because Combustion gives you chance to ignite, right? On top of chance to ignite, you'll see even this pack is dying and this is a fire and ignite resist pack because it also gives you, I guess I have a crit shrine, so maybe that's cheating, we got lucky. Uh, what it also gives you is it lowers enemies res, but it because of the chance to ignite, it makes the proliferation feel better because you're proccing the ignite more often. So that means overall you're using the skill less, right? Over here, you can actually skip this. So we're just going to frost blink, grab the all flame, and then we're going to frost blink out after we get frozen or unfrozen. And then this takes us right here. And then we go ahead and say, let's go, Fairgraves. And this is super easy. We literally can stand here, drop a flame wall, and just shoot a rolling magma. And this will clear everything. In fact, you don't even need to shoot the, the, uh, the flame wall if you don't want to. Bismuth is a good flask, but people, I think, especially newer players, are not really going to utilize flask correctly, so we're just leaving that on the floor. Okay, and let's go ahead and turn this in. And then we're gonna go ahead and vendor everything we're not using. I'll ID the carved wand, didn't hit anything good. I also have a weapon here, Goat Horn, that's three linked. I'm gonna just use a random essence. So we actually got one to 21 lightning dispels and 8% cast speed. So we're gonna replace um, this one right here because this is one to four and this is two to four. So technically this one is stronger. So we're gonna replace that, keep that to the side because it's still good. Actually, we'll just put it in weapon swap. All right, speaking of which, we're gonna go check if there is maybe 10% movement speed boots. So we're just gonna peek here. No movement speed boots yet. Stay sharp out there. One, two, and three. Okay, off to Mervale. Now, when you're fighting Mervale, um, you can actually look for sapphire rings in the shop or when you're just going through. Sapphire rings will give you a bunch of cold res. This will make the fight much, much easier for players who are struggling. Okay, look, a three link. You can also use that vitality gem, if you remember the one we picked up, and turn it on and start using it. You can also purchase a clarity gem, I think at this stage. 
uh, after killing Brutus, and the Clarity Gem can help a lot with Mono Regen, although we will be dropping that later for sure. And here is another Essence that I will absolutely be interacting with, because we have a lot of white gear that we could be upgrading with Essences. If the Essence is way too tanky, you can just skip it, right? There's no harm in just clicking it and seeing. Okay, so we're going to grab that, and I'm actually going to Essence the other weapon that I actually... Oh, it's in my Weapon Swap. Um, so that did not get any good damage stats. I mean, it did have spell damage, but it's minor, so we're going to just continue on. All right, we're close to finishing up Act 1, and then we're going to start to speed this up. I like to go slow at the beginning so people can follow along, and as we start to get deeper and deeper, I will start to go a little faster and faster, as when there's less gem rewards you're claiming, typically it's easier to follow along. Hey, look, another essence. I'm going to skip that one because it's a little far away. Actually, it's literally right there. I'm still skipping it, though. Okay, so this is where your second mana flask can come in handy. You can also drop a portal scroll if you are concerned in the fight. So Mervale does a lot of damage if you have no res like me. The best thing to do is kind of just pay attention. She locks herself in place a lot. So you want to just kind of move around, and that's what Frostblink is really good for. So again, just standard, drop your flame wall and just pretty much spam your rolling magma here, right? You can also teleport, but it's pretty easy, right? Do not stand in that hailstorm as it will delete you. You don't want to get deleted, right? Second phase, I don't like to be melee because she does this scream that makes your character move at like 2% speed. So I like to bait it out. So you see here I stood next to her, she's screaming and now we run away. Then you can get some damage out. Gotta be careful on this phase because of the exploding squids that spawn here. See these red guys? As long as you're just casting, the proliferation will most likely kill everything. So it shouldn't be like that big of a deal. There's the scream again. We're gonna walk back. Don't forget about your flasks. The pro lift though, like I was saying, the little circles really do a lot of the heavy lifting on a lot of fights. Okay, down she goes. We're going to grab Fort Scepter because that's 20 Ellie base. Um, that's actually okay. Carved Wand. Yeah, and Boots. Okay, check for MS. We got movement speed. Let's go. Okay, so for now, I'm going to take Vitality off, swap those Boots, put Flame Wall over there, go into the Southern Forest. We're also going to go ahead and peek this weapon. This has plus one cold. It also has 36% spell damage. This very well could be a better weapon. This would be something we could check. Now we're going to just continue on. I'm also going to ID the carved wand. Didn't get anything good. Okay, that is chromes. I like chromatics a lot. We're going to yoink those. We also need to look out for a blue, which means we're going to be replacing this helmet most likely, although it has a ton of intelligence. Remember, if you ever have a piece of gear with like stats on it and you don't know if you can replace it, you can always kind of like double click it sort of. So I'll give you an example. My helmet provides 16 intelligence, right? I could do that. And since nothing went red, I know that it's OK. All right, let's continue on. The oh, blue pack. Just kidding. We're killing that pack. Okay, Greater Life Flask. I'm going to replace our current one. Then I'm actually going to pick up that. All right. So this is where you are going to need a bunch of transmutation orbs. So we need to make sure we are picking up as much gear as we can get. I'm also going to ID these, though, because they are just better than what we have. So let's start vendoring. That one will keep. Yeah. I'm going to keep this right there. I don't think we're going to use this helmet, so we're just going to sell it. See you later. And the scepter can go there for now. Okay. 
we are so close to our first set of damage nodes. Now, if you are confused, um, this section is now here in the passive tree. So it, it's the same amount of points, it's just on the different side. Blue packs, I'm always a big fan of fighting. Chainmail vest. That's double green. I would normally like to identify this. I did forget if chat do rares sell for alterations on ID or are they also transmutations? They're alterations after they've been ID'd, right? Yeah, so the rares are the most ideal thing to pick up. So I'm actually going to hit the strong box here since I know I'm going to want more transmutations. Since I only have one, I'm going to need like maybe five, maybe four at the minimum here. The more you get, the smoother it is. Ooh, iron ring. We're going to need two of those. And now we officially have two. First damage node. Let the ramping officially begin. Our buddy Quinn would be proud. I'm gonna grab that blue there. So Chamber of Sins is a very interesting layout. If you find the waypoint, which is there, the waypoint always faces its closest to the way out. So what I mean by its closest to the way out is the following. Since, oh actually let's use the leather belt there and we're gonna slap that over and pick up these. I cannot carry this. Okay, well that's fine. Since we see the waypoint is here, right? We know the exit is over here. But before we go exit, we're gonna go ahead and just trash Hello. this, so. One, two, three, four, and that's giving us 11 transmutation shards which does get us another transmutation, which we want. Speaking of these iron rings here, if you vendor the iron rings with the red gem, you get two ruby rings out of that. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to hold that for later. Then we want to make sure we find an extra red, though, because we want an extra red still specifically for... Um, actually, we have an extra red. There we go. Vitality. All right. So let's go back. Turn on Vitality. Oh, wait. Wrong spot. Oopsie daisy. Wrong waypoints. Okay. So now we're going to go this way here because this is facing the way out. And there you go. Now, down here, there is another lab trial. Um, and also, this is where you need a singular alteration. Look at Lapis Amulet. You need a singular alteration to purchase Righteous Fire at the end of this. Can't run it just yet, but we're very close. Like, very close. I think this is your lab trial, so you can see it right there. You forgot to choose different red gems and iron ring to get close to 30 fire res. If you would like to play around with different gems and iron rings to get higher base quality, you can. I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Oh, I forgot there's a gem room here. I like never run into this somehow. It's kind of crazy. Right. I'm gonna put arsonist then. Okay. Here is Fiddleitis. 
Gonna grab that, gonna grab that, because we want our transmutations. Okay. Actually, there's a few more blues. So the loot filter will hide a lot of this gear as we are pushing later. You can always hold alt if you want a little bit more loot. We just got pretty unlucky and didn't find like any transmutations. Usually you find quite a few. Here I take Herald of Thunder. It's not a big deal. It's pretty optional. It's just to give a little bit more damage. It gets dropped really fast. I'm just going to vendor all of this stuff here. Get a transmutation back. Okay. So now we're going to go do... Actually, let's go ahead and pick up that Righteous Fire Gem. Which is right... You and me. The road. Abby, goodbye. Help my head. I Keep your life. Yes. Here. Righteous fire. So we're going to grab that, and we're going to just put it right there. Okay, and now I'm going to activate Herald of Thunder. You cannot use your RF yet. If you try to run RF right now, this is, gonna, this is what's going to happen to you. You don't want that to happen, right? So we'll fix that. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're running this area called Veltrine. We are going to the crypt. Um, normally, you need to do this for a lab trial, so you'd have to do it anyway. However, they changed bandits this go around, and now um, you can actually get a bonus skill point from this area we're going to, so you want to do it. Um, this is just part of the bandit rework. They made it so instead of them giving two points, they now only give one. Speaking of bandits, we'll get to that when we go. You actually have some variety now. Either you can help Oak for more base life to be tankier, you can choose to help Creighton for movement speed so you go faster, or alternatively, you can go ahead and kill them all for a bonus skill point. All three options are solid. Really kind of depends what you're looking for. Grab our waypoint and let's continue. Actually, you see this level up we just got? Regenerate one life per second for each one uncapped fire res. It's time. So since we only have three transmutes, this may not work as much as I'd like, but we're going to see if we can make it work. So step one, you remember those two rubies? We're going to take them. We're going to craft fire res. So we're just going to go ahead and hit this. Now to get this hideout, I believe players, if it's your first time, I think you need to go do the Dread Thicket, which you can find, I believe it's somewhere over here. Uh, this is something I don't really ever think of because I've played for so long, but just that's one thing to kind of pay attention to. Okay, so now our fire res is 104. I'm going to go ahead and craft fire res on this belt after the Vol Ruins. Thank you, friend. Okay, and there is currently 122 fire res. We want more, but this is a good start. So now when we turn on RF, we don't degen. And you'll notice I have 152.9 life regen. This is all coming from the regenerate one life per second for each 1% uncapped fire res. Basically, one life regen, one fire res. 100 fire res, 100 life regen. Okay, let's continue. This is also the point where I like to, oops, Daisy, where I like to switch to shield charge. Uh, shield charge for me is kind. Of, this is when it really just kind of picks up. So that is one other thing to take into account. Okay. You won't find any links for righteous fire early, as Marauder does not get access to, for example, efficacy and elemental focus. The only thing you could really only use right now is life tap, and that's a bit awkward to use with RF this early, so I'm gonna opt out of that and just wait till later.
So here is the lab trial. You can see it right there. We're going to go continue on for our skill point. Driftwood Wand. Plus one to level of socketed spell skills. 28% increased spell damage. Cast speed. There's only one way to describe that wand. Unethical. See you later. That'd be a very good leveling weapon for the beginning. Alright, let's see here. All right, and here is floor two. I'm also going to grab this little baby damage node after. Now, remember, if you're on 3.25, which I imagine you are, this is going to be mirrored onto this side, and you will have a new max res node here for three points. This is very much worth picking up. You'll see it in the POB. You just want to make sure that you take the fire mastery first, because if you take the max res node first, you can't really sustain RF until you have that mastery I showed. Ruby flask, how nice. And right here, this is gonna be where we get our skill points. Okay, perfect. Out we go. What do you want? And I'm just gonna keep this scepter for right now. You have a choice to make. Um, if you like dual wield RF scepters, your RF will do a lot more damage, but your single target will suffer. So I'll just kind of stick with what we have for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this in. And while I turn this in, I wanna go ahead and bring some notice to how strong the fire mastery is. Okay, so looking at my character right now, we currently have 160 life regen. If I remove the fire mastery, we instantly start to degen and I have 40 life regen. This fire mastery is so strong, you can even see now, just from that one point, how much of a difference it makes. If you are struggling to, to sustain your RF, you most likely don't have enough fire resin regen, which is all coming from that node. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and move on. I do want to start getting ready for shield charge to make up for some, some lost time. We'll do that in a little bit, though. Blue pack is always worth fighting. Look at that, a regret orb. I don't regret one thing about fighting that blue pack. This is why you want to have a mobility skill like Frostbling, so you can traverse the distance here on some areas. So now with my points, I would take those three those three nodes I have in the POB for max res. That's where these next three points would go. Since I don't have those, I'm just going to continue on. So that means I'm going to start going towards my barbarism into hardy. I know you're not really a min-maxer. Wow! Rude words! I'm not answering that question now, friend. That's not nice. That's not nice at all. Okay, so over here, you'll notice that there is Crumbled Road here. The Crumbled Road indicates where Alira is. We're also going to need to kill this guy, which I, I think I didn't even notice I killed him. Then you can activate this. This over here gets you a skill point. So, for example, if I walk over here and I open up a portal, 
you can actually go to Act 1 this way, and then you can go ahead and grab your skill point. And then you can come this way, go back to the waypoint here, and then you can go to the Crumbled Road. Remember the Crumbled Road we were just talking about? So now we're just going to go look for it. Let's see. Okay. So here is the road. Now you follow the road crumbling. I'm blind and I can't see it. Okay, so it's here, and then it's somewhere here? I'm blind, I can't really see it. I'm gonna be a believer, it's here somewhere. I can't see, I don't know what's wrong with me, I think I'm like legally blind today. I see the crumbled road, I just didn't see where it went to. <laughs> Doo -doo. You can see it on the mini-map. Really? Um, am I dumb? Usually it's way easier to see for me, but I can't see it at all. That's so weird. I mean, she probably, like, has to be here, right? Like, I can see it here. Uh, and then I can't really see shit. Here we go. Lyra's here. Okay. We're just going to go ahead and kill her. Okay. There's no now we want to go the opposite way. Witch. The opposite way, meaning we're going to go to the right side. And the reason we want to go to the right side is to go kill Weaver. Is it worth it to help Alira next patch? For RF Chieftain, no. Alira provides you with 15 all res. Chieftain does not need all res. Why I recommend either Oak for base HP, Creighton for movement speed, or just killing them all for a skill point. I don't think best applies here. It's all about what you are interested in doing. Thank you, my ancestor. I will repay your gift. Oh, a ruby ring. It's very unlikely this ruby ring is better than ours since it's blue. It would have to literally roll a life roll and then we craft fire res, or it would have to roll fire res and we craft life. There's not really any other option there. Whoa, I'm gonna take, this is spell damage, but remember what I talked about essences? If you have any white base gear, you can always upgrade them with essences. Okay. Weaver is down. Let's go ahead and look here. I don't think we need any gems, so I'm going to just skip that. However, we are going to ID this. So this can be used. This has bonus life, has a suffix open for fire res. So we can go ahead and actually do that. Right? Just craft fire resistance like this. Look at that. Okay. This ring we can check. It's not better. And then we don't need the iron ring. You could just identify it just to check, but there's nothing there. Okay. Get rid of that stuff. Okay, and then here are our essences on the side. So I want to go see if there's any shield anywhere. So I'm going to just go peek vendors really fast. Damn. So we're looking for, actually, these colors right here on a shield. That's shield charge faster attacks. So I'm going to yoink this shield here. Stay and we have Arcane Surge Frost Blink. Let's see. So we're going to keep this until Vol, and then we'll worry about using it. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Okay. The reason I want shield charge is just quite literally to go faster. It feels much better to 
kind of like shield charge than just walk. I'm not a big fan of walking. I just need more colors right now. I would be down to shield charge, but the problem is if I drop my... Like, I'm okay with dropping the Arcane Surge, but I don't want to drop the Herald of Thunder. And I don't want to drop the Flame Wall. So once I get one more blue, I'd be down for it. Arcane Surge is not a big deal. You don't have to be tied to the Arcane Surge. That's that's not a problem. What little help I can and under that, that's a chromatic. Very good. The other option is chroming our gloves. Um, but if I chrome the gloves, I do lose vitality, so that's a potential issue. Um, we'll just worry about it in a little bit. It's not like we actually have any problems right now. Um, well, okay, hold on. There is one more thing we can do. Hello. We could just check if there is a decent helmet. So, I'm just gonna type helm. I mean, here is two... This is actually perfect. It's a blue and a red. So, I'm gonna just take that, because I don't actually care about the Arcane Surge. And then we're gonna just go ahead and... You could quality it, why not? And then slap it with a... It would reflect. Look at that, I got Int and Fire Res. So we replace that. We're just going to sell that. Then I'm going to replace my shield. Then I'm going to take the Frost Blink and put it there. Trash the Arcane Surge. Delete you. Grab faster attacks. Put it over there. Actually, we want to Alk the shield too, so let's do that. I'm just going to go ahead and do that to it. Okay. And then we're going to grab Shield Charge. What little help I can offer. Shield charge. There we go. Be well. Okay. And I like putting, I'm just going to set my hotkeys the way I like them. Perfect. Let's go. currency that you don't have. What did I do? May have just like pulled a singular transmutation or something. I don't think it's uh, a big deal. Okay, now we're gonna go over here and we want to grab Hardy as our next point. So now we can actually go back and get some bonus skill points, which is really nice. I cannot do this yet. Where are we going? Okay, over here. Hey, Paint, are you here by chance? Hey, okay, I'm just gonna grab some of this. We're just gonna vendor it. 
Oh, kill all you're here? Can you help me with something? Can you just um, change the pin to this for me and set it for the whole day, please? Okay, we are moving on. So I'm going to grab my bonus skill points after we get our next waypoint rather than wasting a portal. And then just let me know when you've done it because I can't see it from my dashboard. very much. Ancestors, forgive me. I have opened the way to Kitava, father of corruption. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my bonus skill points. Since we killed all bandits, this is what we opted out for. Remember, you can kind of choose really whatever you want. As long as, as long as you don't help Alira, you should be fine. Okay. Check the scepter. Nothing special. Vendor the rest here. See ya later. Also gonna trash these. Actually, this one we could. This one we could sell, since it's rare. Okay. We got them nice three skill points. This is actually very big defensive power creep. You can see our life regen here is 188. When we grab Hardy, it goes from 188 to 239. And then we grab a 50 recovery node right after. Now, if I have an open green, I would love to use something called Blood Rage. Blood Rage is a buff that we can toggle on to drain HP, but acquire frenzy charges and movement and attack speed. This is nice because it helps you go faster in the campaign, especially when you have all this excess life regen. You, you don't need all of it, right? You don't have to be greedy with it. You can you can spare some for some other sources. Why Herald of Thunder? Well, when you're in Act 2, you get access to Heralds. All of them give you damage. Herald of Thunder typically gets you the most damage. That's just how it is. I don't do this yet. The numbers don't lie, my friend. Here is the 50 life recovery. Now, I also get the question all the time on why we don't try to stack all the life right now. Because RF primarily scales off of your life. The problem with this is that... If you stack too much life in the early game, before you have your sources of percent life regen, you will start to degen. If you notice right now, 95% of our life regen is coming from the fire mastery and the nodes on the tree, which are primarily flat. This means that if we get too much life, we outscale our regen and then we start to degen. This is not a problem at all in like the mid and late stages. It's only a thing really in the campaign. Okay, we are on our trek to Vol. Uh, Vol is going to be a little scary because we primarily have fire res and not really like lightning, which is what Vol is. It should be fine though. When we get to him, I will explain his mechanics. Um, it's primarily just like a lightning beam you're going to move around from, and that's really about it.
How do you know which direction to head? It's typically, I think, diagonal, so like the waypoints here, or like the entrance, so trying to aim like, to the opposite, right? Okay. Oh, uh, this has a spell damage roll. Okay, no, nothing special, sadly. That has eight to fifty or eight to thirteen fire dispels. This is actually stronger than this weapon, but the problem is I don't have a three link for it. One thing I did not state about Righteous Fire is if you read the gem, it actually gives you a spell damage multiplier, which means it's actually buffing your rolling magma now by quite a bit. And here is the beam I was talking about. You can kind of just like circle around and you'll be fine. If you're using Frost Blink on him, that's also a slam you want to dodge. Frost Blink will apply a chill, which is really nice. Also was not juggling my MP correctly, so I am going to need to take a portal here. Although you can see you can just kill him with RF, but it will take quite a long time when it doesn't have any links yet, right? So I'm just going to portal for MP. This is another area where having two MP flasks can be advantageous when you're still in the early stages of the build. Just gonna move away from that. Down goes. So now on the tree, we're gonna be going north to get some proper damage nodes. We have uh, Divine Judgment, along with the Chance to Freeze and Ignite, which is very nice. You have Spiritual Aid, which we'll talk about when we get there. And you also have Holy Fire. A lot of really good stuff. All of this stuff is just damage for us. I it is good to feel your warmth again, Ramakor, the Father of Light. The best thing we could find right now are four links, which the loot filter will highlight any four link pretty much that drops. Okay, make sure you talk to Clarissa here, otherwise you're gonna have to come back. Okay, so one nice thing you can do to save a little bit of time here is you can actually pop out from here and use a portal scroll, which will put you there. So take a look here. You can just do this, enter, and then you save the time running, and then you can just portal back later. So that way you don't have to run through twice. Okay, so we're just going to trash this stuff. The main reason I'm not identifying this... Actually, I could identify it now for alterations, that's fine. But the main reason why I know it's not going to be good is that it doesn't have the right links for me. And if it doesn't have the, li the right links, I know it's already going to be difficult to use it. Good luck. Okay, I'm also going to go ahead and just peek and see kind of what's available here. See if there's anything good. Uh, nothing too impressive here. So we're just going to go ahead and move Stay on. Out of the shadows. Through the slums. Using. So we are looking for the crematorium here. The crematorium gives us a lot of damage. And moving on into the crematorium, we want to have a location in our gems for basically red, blue that's linked. So if I look up here, I have red, blue. If I look down here, I have red and blue. And the reason this is important is we're going to be getting a curse, which is flammability, which is going to give a ton of damage. The downside, it costs a lot of MP to use it. And MP is already kind of a problem with our build, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use a support gem we get in Act 1 called Life Tap. Life Tap is going to make it so it only costs life. And guess what? We can turn all of that excess life regen into a way of casting spells. This is when the build starts to get a lot more comfortable. which way we go. Let's go this way and see.
gosh, this is a really do this yet. long run. Okay, perfect. Just put that point in there, and let's continue. Now, over here, there is also another... Um, there is another lab trial. You can see that up at the top here. So you want to make sure you go ahead and do that. Whether you do this now or right before you're ready to run Labyrinth is up to you. It doesn't really matter. Typically, it saves you time if you if you bump into it. You should just may as well do it. So, like, in fact, right there, that's the lab trial. That's a chrome. We're going to grab that. That is indeed the Labyrinth Trial. Going to zoom past that. Piety should be over here somewhere. You'll notice I'm not killing everything I come across. That's because I'm I'm the same level as the zone, and I feel like my gear is okay. The only thing I would really want at this point are four links. That'll just come with time. But there's no harm in just taking it slow. You don't have to shield charge through everything. You can take your time through the campaign. Do, you even feel Do I feel pain? No. But I feel life regen. That one for Enough sure. Okay. Grab that. Go back to character selection or use a portal scroll. That's kind of up to you. Okay, so now we get some good stuff. So skip everything here. Be well. Come over here and grab flammability. Like this. So flammability for one alteration. Okay. We're going to go ahead and socket that. Let's see. So it looks like we do need to drop a blue. At this stage, I actually drop Herald of Thunder. I drop Herald of Thunder in place of Purity of Elements. So a blue for a blue. And then I don't like running Flame Wall anymore, so I replace Flame Wall for Flammability. Now I'm going to take the Vitality, move it away, and I'm going to go ahead and put Life Tap inside my gloves here. Yes. Goodbye. What little help I can offer is yours. Just gonna get rid of this stuff too. This is actually good, but you don't have the ability to use it because of links. Goodbye. Okay, so we got what we wanted. Now we're just gonna go ahead and go back. Make sure you activate your new auras. So what Purity of Elements does is Purity of Elements makes it so that we are immune to ailments. This means during the campaign you're immune to uh, ignite, chill freeze and shock which are the main the main killers i would say this also gives us a bunch of res which makes it easier to hit res cap on our cold and lightning since we're primarily stacking fire it also gives us more life regen now you have two options you can run vitality for more regen you can run herald of thunder at the moment for more damage the reason i'm running herald of or, uh, uh, vitality is just because of my blues right now uh, my life regen is more than fine and i just need more blue sockets Over here, you want to make sure you grab one bust before you go right, and I'll explain that in a second. Otherwise, you're going to have to backtrack here. So this right here, see this? This is when you know you want to get one bust before you get to this point. Now, if the blue pack that you're fighting spreads like this, I just skip it. I, I'm not really interested in playing a little mini game. I think you usually have to get one bust down, and then you can get one up. I don't know if you have to get two down, so I'm going to try just going north now and see if the third bust is up here. The reason you want to collect these is you get a skill point for turning them in. I think you might even get some respects as well. So you just look to see if you see that yellow exclamation mark here. Oh, just kidding. I don't know how to count. I have all of them. Make sure you stay in school, kids. It's very important. PoE is an extremely math-heavy game, even when it comes to simple addition. Okay, out we go. Perfect. So remember, you can turn these in for a skill point. 
So if I look at my tree, it's still just pathing, unfortunately. So not too concerned about turning that in yet. We'll turn it in whenever it's convenient for us. Also remember, so right now you'll notice it is kind of annoying for me to spam shield charge because I constantly go oom. If you happen to have a red, red, green link, so that would basically be this, but an extra link. What that's going to do is it's going to allow you to put life tap on your shield charge as well. So now you're also shield charging and it's costing life. Now over here, there's a waypoint. This waypoint is always right next to catacombs. You can go in there to get your next lab trial. Yeah, I don't actually know that one audio. I am honestly pretty terrible at memorizing zone layouts. I just do the, the bare minimum and typically most of my knowledge stops after like acts two or three, three, I think, maybe four, maybe four. Okay, so, boom, got our skill points, vendor, and none of these are very good. Okay, and then I'm just going to go peek if there's any four links here. A regex can help you uh, identify four links. I should probably update my POB to have those in the notes. Do, 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 do. Go check one more time, actually. So... Okay, this is actually better. That was a good call, chat. These are the colors I was talking about for a shield. So you can actually take out a shield like this. And at level 30, that will be our new shield charge shield. That's a good call. Okay, so now that we're in Battlefront, remember we need to pick this up right here. And now we have two ways we can go. Doesn't really matter. You can decide to go to docks first or you can decide to go to the temple technically the temple does give you a new craft um, for a lot of damage i believe so you might want to go ahead and do that first i'm just going to continue like this do we have prefix open we don't so i would need a new weapon first i would need a triple blue weapon which is kind of hard to do right now Every dead end. Holy. Stop it, GGG. Surely it's right here. Wait, the waypoint's here. If the waypoint's here, that means it can't be here. So we literally hit... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Maybe... Can it be this way, though? Can it be all the way over here? Like this? What? We actually just hit every single dead end. So I'll just tap this. So that means it's gotta be on this side of the map so i'm gonna imagine that this is gonna branch down it has to yep there it is okay so this is branching down and then down here somewhere is gonna be our bust or our whatever it's called oh chrome take that there it is I'll just hit the strong box while we're at it. Good. Okay. To the battlefront. If you want to keep up with all the RF changes, I encourage you to go spend a few minutes on my YouTube channel.
Okay, now we can finally get some damage nodes. Remember also, when you have Purity of Elements now, what's really nice is boxes can never freeze you. Ever. They can never freeze you. Wow, she's right there. Interesting. Oh, but you have to go around. Oh, okay. Well, at least we know she's right there. That means it's got to be this way, right? I don't think there's any other way to get there. Unless I was supposed to go that way, but no. It's always a long trek to her, right? I cannot do this yet. Oh, Diala! I cannot carry this. Okay, there we go. Grab this. So you can either grab the int one or the dex one. Int is important now. Dex is important later. I'm just going to grab the int for now. And basically has nothing on it outside of some life regen. It's okay. Okay. And then here is the craft I'm talking about. I think it's like right over here. You can access it. So I'm going to just go back to character. Okay. Did I forget to get the uh, thing from her? Did I not take it? What do you want? Not oh yeah, yeah. Got to make sure you take that. There you go. If you don't take that, then you cannot do this next part. So you use this to burn that, and then we can continue onward. I'm gonna put this point into a damage node. Very nice. Now there's this little mini boss we're gonna come across here called Gravicious. You don't have to fight him for this build. You can completely skip him if you want to. He is gonna be coming up real soon. Now I notice I'm a level under now, so I'm just gonna kinda of just kill some more mobs here. Also hoping for a four link to drop, so that's another reason why. I'll just kill the blue pack here, and then we'll move on. This guy does a lot of damage. It's primarily fire, so you should be fine, but I'm going to skip him because there's no need. Killing Gravicious gives you access to some level 28 gems. That's the primary reason to kill him. In fact, actually, I lied. There is a reason to kill Gravicious with this build if you want to. For players who really hate rolling magma, if you kill Gravicious, you can actually get Armageddon Brand. Um, an Armageddon Brand is actually very nice. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why I thought about skipping him. Um, Armageddon Brand is less single target, more AoE clear. That's what it comes down to. My mana is gone. I cannot do this yet. It also just feels a lot better to use.
Karma is only for Witch and Templar from Gravicious. Really? Is that in the patch? Because I remember getting Armageddon brand on Marauder. Am I drunk? I'm actually going to check that. Ah, I don't need to check it. It's okay. Piety, you are truly Kitara's slave, daughter of corruption. So when you're in Lunaris Temple 2, whenever you go up like this, you never want to go down. So your your goal is just constantly going forward, right? Full plate's pretty nice. I'm actually going to grab that. We do need armor. Although, again, our issue right now is blue sockets. the whole thing that I miss out. I may have missed that. Let's see. Yep, because that's a Volside area. Just check, there is no Armageddon brand for Marauder, but you can buy Flame Blast. Even after you complete... Okay, so maybe it's actually Library. That's what it might be. Sorry, my mistake. It might actually be Library where I get Armageddon brand, because that's pretty close to Gravicious. Gravicious is like 28, and Library are around like 30, 31. That's why. That was my confusion. Now you'll notice if you're in the POB, it says do not level your life tap on utility skills. And right now, I am leveling the life tap on the utility skill. Unfortunately, there is no way I can explain kind of how this interaction works. So basically, since I don't have life tap on Righteous Fire, I don't have to worry about keeping the life tap buff active. What this means, and also you want to go the way with one little cart here, what this means is that when my Righteous Fire is finally able to use it, or my, you know, future skills are able to use Life Tap, I will simply give them the high level Life Tap on my Shield Charge, um, or wherever it may be, because actually I forgot, I'm not using it now. Um, but anyway, if you happen to level it, you just give the high level one to your damage skills, like Fire Trap and RF, and then you give the utility skills a level one again. Again, it's really only important when you have your when you have life tap in your RF, and typically life tap is the fifth link. So it's not really anything you have to pay attention to. Just a bunch of mumbo jumbo, really. My mana is gone. Okay, from here we're gonna go ahead and get a damage node, a chance to ignite, and we can actually use this new shield now. I am gonna hit it up with some armor scraps. Do we have some? Yes, we do. And I'm actually just going to alk it, because does this give life? That's reflect. I'm just going to alk it. And that gives armor, life, suffix open for fire res. And we can now put life tap on shield charge. Z damage. Well, it's the campaign in SSF gear. It's pretty normal to not do that much damage. Especially when you don't have, when you're on a, a three link and an unlink, you know, a zero link. Zero link. Yeah. I mean, you need library. Once you get library, you're good. Okay. One thing to note about Piety is when she's in her ice form, right, you want to make sure you actually hide behind pillars if you're not tanky enough. If you're tanky enough, it's okay. Purity of Elements will typically fix that problem. Do, 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 do. We're just gonna get rid of this. The 
That's actually kind of okay, but I'm too lazy to use that. See you later. And we're going to get rid of the shield. Bring me back something. Okay, now we're gonna go grab a life tap. Hello. We're gonna put that life tap with our shield charge, and then we're gonna continue. We we are blessed. Remember, if you have literal white gear with suffixes open or anything with suffix open, you can always craft fire res um, to get, or you could even craft cold and lightning at this stage, but that'll all be fixed in our next lab. So what I'm actually gonna go ahead and do now, or by next lab, I mean first lab, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go ahead and go check if there's any extra gear, just like we did before. So just peeking across. This would be like an ideal base. It's basically like a full chain mail or a full ring mail. I want an armor ES for the body armor. Uh, pure ES is fine, but it offers no armor. So you do feel a bit squishier in that setup. Stay out of the shadows. Okay. So now we are going to go move on. Oh, actually, did I give... I wasn't paying attention. I distracted myself there. Did we give the key for a skill point? No, I don't think we did. Be careful. You plant the lie. Okay, let's go. Divine Judgment. Finally, a nice damage node. Usually, I'd have a four link by now, so this is definitely kind of unlucky. I cannot do this yet. Yeah, I definitely need a new body armor. This thing is, like, really bad. Okay. Uh, greed. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up this essence. Why not? Shadow Scepter. Maybe time for a new weapon? Nope. I'm gonna skip that guy. He's kind of tanky. So, library is kind of huge. And in fact, in the POB, there is a section just for library. And the reasoning for this is because you can buy... Pretty much all the gems you weren't able to access before. Um, so this is where your RF actually starts to do damage. Once we complete library and a, get like a three link for it. Four link it goes really hard, but three link is good enough to get started. We just don't have a three link yet. Does anyone have a regex for me to highlight all four links? Go ahead and put that in the POB. Is it just the dash W one? Is it enough? Are you sure? Are you lying to me? What's the second one that blood gave? Okay. So here you want to get your four book stands, your pages. So here's one. That's true, if you get lucky and get an Orb of Binding, that is extremely strong. Yeah, Orb of Bindings are very strong. It's putting a giant circle, what? That's a thing? Library is cursed. I'm convinced my whole run is cursed, to be honest. Speak about leveling unique here. Sure. So, I can kind of spitball some low-level items that would help you out. So, at this stage now, at this character level, 
you'd have access to two very good accessories on rings. One of them is called a Pyre Ring. The other one is called a Kikizuru. The Kikizuru Ring is going to give you a bunch of life regen. The Pyre Ring is going to give you a bunch of damage. Another, am like an amulet you could use is like, I would say Karui Ward or Replica Karui Ward. Replica is better, um, although it's probably going to be more expensive. As you get a little higher level, you have things like Immortal Flesh. Okay, so for here, we're going to go ahead and grab... Honestly, nothing here matters too much. You can grab, like, Arrogance. It might help later, but it's not really a big deal. So now, you actually want to open the path of building. So if you look here on my screen, if we take the drop down to Library, click here for gems to purchase at Library. So these are your most important ones. Of course, you don't need Armageddon brand if you're okay with just using Rolling Magma, but these are going to be your core ones, right? So let's start with Fire Trap here. So Fire Trap is going to be one transmutation secured. We're also going to need Elemental Focus. Where is Elemental Focus? Right here. And Efficacy. Oops. Efficacy. Don't have another transmutation, really. Okay. Let's go ahead and go over here really fast. There's a burning damage you can get. I can also just sell this stuff. It's fine. Burning damage. We still need to grab the efficacy, but it's okay because we can't use it yet anyway. And I'm just going to start leveling all of these up right now. So I'll just leave that alone and they're leveling. So again, one big thing that we really need right. is specifically a four link or a three link. Ideally a four link, but a three link would work. Like this right here, this would actually work for us. The problem with this is that it needs 35 dexterity and we have unfortunately not enough. Sometimes you just get unlucky in the campaign and this is absolutely a run reflecting that. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, let's see. What else could we do here? I'm going to go ahead and buy this Ritual Scepter, although I don't think this is worth it. I'm struggling a little bit here for damage. So, I'm going to go ahead and use the Blacksmith Whetstone. This would make it 20% quality. Then I'm going to pray the Fusing 3 Link Set. Okay. Now I want to color it all blue. Um, so, let's get all... Ooh. We can do this, right? Okay, we got lucky with all blue. And then I'm actually going to go to my hideout. I'll show you the reason for this. So that we can craft fire damage to spells. And it's this 24 craft. This is the one we unlocked when we did Solaris. So we're going to craft that. Now that does not actually help your RF, but it does give you a lot of single target that you kind of want at this stage, right? Okay, we're going to just go ahead and continue on. So I could have I could have alked the item. There's no harm in doing that. The problem is I kind of just spent a lot of my currency on it. And because I spent a lot of my currency on it, I kind of wanted to make sure that it didn't get screwed up. Use currency from your tab, dot, dot, dot. Well, that's okay. There's no reason to dot, dot, dot me. How much currency did I spend? I'll just drop it. I know I have the alterations in my inventory. I can't stop it from taking that. I have to go like put everything in a folder and that's a lot of work. Uh, I cannot do this yet. It was four transmutation orbs. I actually don't think I had four transmutations, but I mean newer players will have them because I've been telling people to pick up gear and selling it. So that's fine. You will be fine. You just pick up your gear and you sell it. My it's not a gone. problem. I think I have actually found like one transmutation this whole week. <laughs> like this whole run. So you also have like bonus, uh, a lot of bonus things to do in the campaign for extra stuff, right? Because this is literally in standard, there is a lot less occurring because we're not playing a temporary league where you typically get a lot more stuff in the early. Yep, 
Yeah, I mean, we're also running on an unlinked RF and a three-link rolling magma. I think that it's totally fine. I think anyone, like, arguing that it's not ethical is just a bit puzzling, but that's okay. So for here, you actually never have to take corner rooms. You can typically find the other location by staying out of the sides and just kind of going by the middle. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move up, and you can take Spiritual Aid now, but I'm going to come up and grab Holy Fire first, because we are going to run into end problems soon. Now, the only thing you should have to worry about here is, ironically, this guy. This guy right here is a fire guy, but he can hit you with all of his projectiles at the same time. So even if your fire res cap, it can still hurt. Then you have these three. These guys really don't do anything, so... You should be fine with this build. This character, like this one here, might hurt you a bit. You can just move out of the way of the barrage of attacks. You'll be fine. I'm gonna move out of that. That actually hurts. This thing you can kind of just move around in a circle. So you just circle strafe him and you just take literally no damage. This thing is a cold degen. This one right here. Anytime something scary is occurring, I always press Frost Blink first, because you can always Frost Blink into Shield Charge. You could Shield Charge into Frost Blink like this, but you have to wait for, like, you don't have to wait for the animation, it's just slower, right? We may have to go get more MP on this fight. Since our damage is kind of non-existent right now. It's actually like okay, but it is in reality non-existent. I'm actually going to go back, vendor this really quickly, and actually check. How you doing? That's a very high life helmet. See you later. Not using that again because of socket pressure. I could try to socket and link it. Would potentially be worth it, but I'm not going to bother with that. So let's see if we find anything there. Nope. Let's continue. Actually, I saw a three link. Hello. Oh, it's not three link. Never mind. It's three socket. Three alchemy orbs? Are you crazy? Out of your mind. Who would pay for that? Three alchemies. It's not even linked. There's like more scamming going on in the vendors than like PoE trade, dude. Holy. I never fight these. Uh, you see these like wispy looking guys here? If there's ever a rare one, I always skip them because they're so tanky for some reason. Even the blue pack will probably be tanky. Okay, these guys aren't tanky. Just the rare guys. I 
takes too long. Fire and ignite resistant. Rude. Don't really need to kill this guy. I'll fight him because I'm going to believe he drops a four link. Unlucky. I think that's actually crazy that I have not found a single four link yet. Because I have all four links highlighted on my filter. Usually I find them in Act 3. Like maybe not a bunch of them, but usually one, even if it's not for uh, for me. Okay. We really? Okay. This would be the ideal base for us. The problem is I have no fusings. So I'm going to buy it. I think that also took transmutations that I don't have. So I'll tell you what. Here's, here's eight alterations. You can have them. 32 wisdoms. Sorry, that's uh, that's unethical. We'll just drop them on the floor for you. It's still a three link. It is a three link. Yeah, it is a three link. So we're going to use it. Um, problem is I don't have another orb for what I need to do. Because I need to go by efficacy. And I think I need more transmutations. So I'll tell you what. I'll just show people how to get transmutations. Since people were complaining about it. Basically, anything rare, you're just going to pick up and never identify it. You're just going to sell it rare. Um, that we have to keep, though. That's a fire trap helm. Yeah, that is a fire trap helm. We want to keep that. That's really good. So we actually really need dexterity now because the problem that's occurring is we are unable to level our fire trap. And that's a problem because the only reason we're not using it is because it's not high enough level. So once it gets some levels, we want to go ahead and use it. Holy full chain mail four link. Okay. So that is an ideal base for us because it's armor energy shield. Now the problem, we need to color it blue, 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 red for the most ideal colors. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, perfect. Very good. Very good. Where is uh, Vol, by the way? Here he is, okay. That's why you pick up the chromes. That's why you pick up the chromes, man. Turn off your cheats, brother. It's obvious. Obvious. Wow, what do you mean it's an armor ES base? Those colors aren't hard. Scripted run. Listen here, whippersnapper. Okay, we're gonna put this one here. You know, I forgot I had a three link silk invest this whole time. I forgot I stashed that. Whoops, well, uh, nobody needs to know about that. Okay, so we're gonna sell that. That gives us five transmutation shards. That puts us to 18 transmutation shards. I think I just need one more blue and then I can get the desired stuff here. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is really fast. We're just gonna go ahead and turn this in. 
We're gonna go pick up some more loot, and then we're gonna go swap on to this RF body. Don't die. This should be a stone golem for us, who gives a ton of life regen. We're gonna put him there. Now, there is another problem um, where we want to fix this dexterity issue. So, chat, can you help me with the recipe for yes. a turquoise amulet again? Actually, there's a turquoise amulet right here. I just don't have the transmutation for it. So, basically, if I can get a transmutation, I can buy a turquoise amulet. See is that a fan? Uh, no, somebody is revving their car outside the window, and there's nothing I'm able to do about it, unfortunately. So, it is what it is. Yeah, it's Texas. People like their loud cars. There's not much I can do. So I want to use this four link, and I want to use... I want to buy a turquoise amulet, but we're lacking transmutations. And somehow, we can't find any. And I've actually played this game so much, and I don't think I've ever had a single run where transmutations just don't drop. Like every single one I've made has to be from recipe. Oh, we're going to pick those up for later. How do you make transmutations? Can you buy them? Or what's the... Can you convert alts into it? Okay, let's grab one, two, three, four. We're just going to go ahead and vendor this. Seven portals. I could have actually done that. That would have been fine yes. for me. We're going to keep that, and we're going to vendor these to get some transmutations. Then we're going to buy this transmuta or, uh, turquoise amulet, swap on that. See ya. Then we're going to put these gauntlets to the side. Then we're going to swap onto our new helmet. We do lose, so we're going to lose a few things here. So I'm actually going to socket our boots one time. Okay, we got a red. So that means we could, uh, let's see here. How are we going to do this? Vitality and Frost Blink. And I do need Frost Blink. So I guess we just wait a little bit. Yeah, we just wait a little bit. Holy car, can you shut up? We do want Stone Golem. That's true, yeah. Stone Golem goes there. Let's go pick up some more. All right. One, and that could be good, but there's no way we're going to have... 66 decks right away that actually this would be another fire trap helm, but i'm like running out of space right now So it's kind of strange. I can we're just gonna grab this. some of these portal out again That was a car that was yes. a car. Yeah, that's my neighbor That's nine more and we have okay perfect So now we have enough and we're gonna go hide this right over there. Okay So now we're gonna go ahead and go back to library and we are going to go by efficacy, because that is what I was missing. Now that we have acquired efficacy, which is a transmutation, go we are going to look care, at this body armor, friend. and we are going to hit it up with a life roll here. Okay? And then it has... Okay, no suffix open, but that's fine. So we get efficacy, righteous fire, then we get burning damage, and then we get... Elemental focus. Very good. My knowledge. Now we can vendor these right here. Okay. Talamoana. How you doing? Now we do more damage. Stay yeah. out of the shadows. Lay by. Definitely do more damage. And now we summon our stone golem. Okay. I cannot do this yet. Now you'll notice RF does a lot more damage, and we don't even have blood rage. Turns out if you put links on your gear, they do a lot more damage. His belly rumbles. He is hungry for me. No way.
I will most likely use this body armor all the way till the end of the campaign, unless I find four link body armors with, um, basically that I could chrome easily. So this body armor probably stays for, like, the whole campaign, right? That's what's, it's so powerful to get your four links early. Where is... Is this all... Okay, it's over here. What about a 5 link? Oh, 5 beats 4, so just apply that logic. You will feast no longer, Kitaba. The ancestors demanded. Now we don't need gift card. Right. We also don't need this Herald of Thunder or Flame Wall. Uh, this flask can come over there. I'm never gonna turn in the decanter. I don't care about the arrogance. And that'll actually sell, so we can just sell that. Crimson Jewel. You can ID those if you want. The likelihood of them being usable is very unlikely. Jewels need at least two properties to be worth a skill point. So like fire damage and life or damage over time and fire damage, etc. My golem dies every time. Resummon it or stop using it. I typically use my golem till around yellow maps and then drop it forever. I cannot do this yet. Okay. Now we're gonna go grab a skill point. And it is time for library. Or not library, labyrinth. Also gonna vendor this. Uh, this. Hello. See you later, bud. Bring me back something nice, huh? You stand before the gates of the Lord's Labyrinth. Within the justice will prevail. Fire res check. I'm sitting at 189. That's a chromatic. Thank you very much. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to Labyrinth. I apply this logic of go right. I don't really know why. It just, just kind of what sticks with me. So I just go right all the time. That's all I do. For players who want to make additional money or have a chance at making additional money, I can't really help you here because it's based off the meta. Also, there is a, a crafting thing right over here. You can look at what popular, uh, like what builds are popular, and you can bring that gem into Labyrinth with you, so you can transfigure it, hoping for, like, the transfigured version. It's pretty unlikely that it happens, but it's just something to note, because you don't, you don't want to transfigure your Righteous Fire, as that kind of deletes your build. You don't want to do that. Such resilience. Wisdom is the offspring of suffering and time. You're going to be careful about these boxes in lab just because if you die, you have to do the labyrinth all over again. But thankfully, because we are using purity of elements, you cannot get frozen on this stage. At all in the build. Technically, if you're doing it correctly, you should never get frozen uh, after this, but yeah. You also notice that I found a rare body armor, a full chainmail. 
There is no reason for me to look at this. It's not a four link. It will not be used. So that's kind of like how the philosophy works here. So I'm just going to peek. We are on track, so we can just keep going. So right now, um, this is where you have, like, a lot of flexibility in the POB. There's actually, like, quite a few different ways to approach it. Players who want to just play it safe, instead of copying what I do, you can just follow the POB. There's nothing wrong with that. I typically always adapt based off of my run. So based off of, you know, what I find, I modify my tree. The end result is always the same. It's just the leveling that's different. If that doesn't make any sense, just follow the POB. What ambition. My three lieutenants remain. Misery loves company. I cannot do this yet. Thoughts on leveling with Molten Strike instead of rolling Magma. I encourage players to level any way that they find to be enjoyable for themselves. That's my honest opinion. The reason I chose not to level with melee skills is, number one, I would have to transition to RF anyway, and number two, I can't test the new melee skills on the 3.24 patch, so it's not possible for me to do it here. Have you ever thought of dual streaming on YouTube? Yeah, actually, I was planning on testing it last week. Uh, I just wanted to talk to someone who's done YouTube streaming to confirm because there's a few things to iron out. It's kind of weird that it's really hard to test this stuff because you have to, like, create an entire new Twitch channel if you want to just test stuff. It's very strange. My mana is gone. I think, um, what is it that most people are using for it? It's, uh, Restream? Yeah, there we go. You get any source of chill freeze immune. This build will always be freeze immune once you pick up purity of elements and onward. Even when you drop it, you will retain freeze immunity as long as you are following the build correctly. What is WIP in the POB? WIP stands for work in progress. TLDR, don't click it. An aspirant can afford to be promising. An emperor must keep those the empire awaits you okay with open jaws. So i'm not sure yet where i want to go spiritual aid sovereignty acrimony i'll have to think here regen feels pretty good right now i think we go for damage because regen feels good binding orb you that's nice free. that's a guaranteed four link which we don't need as much now. Before your emperor, you okay, a day holy, what is this? Goddess of justice, you are okay, so we're going to go and touch this. We're going to become a chief then. And then I am going to go here and add quality. Paint, please do not change the pin. We're going to go ahead and go to righteous fire. And we're going to add quality because that's what I care about. Okay, and return to town. Okay, so now you get a really cool ascendancy. So if you take a look at my res right now, right? You can currently see that it is 76, 28, 71. With these few clicks here, we go to res cap. So not only are we res cap, we're basically res cap for the next Kataba. 
Now you never really have to worry about cold and lightning, and you only focus on fire res. And then later you worry about chaos, just for the campaign, it's just cold and lightning. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my inventory here with stuff that I don't want. Maybe this hits all attributes. Oh. Uh, ooh, that hit fire res. Okay, that's better than... That's better than this one. We can actually just replace that. Later on, we could put life on it. Okay, and honestly, uh make back those transmutations, so we'll just do that. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna go for damage, so I'm gonna go spiritual aid first. Okay. Now, this right here is actually when I typically opt for fire trap. Um, this, at this point, fire trap is usually leveled. It says required level 27, so it's catching up. It's not quite there yet. However, I do have a potential four link right here. I could try four linking this right here and see if it hits it, but okay. I was really not expecting that. So those are fire trap colors. It is better to have a blue at this stage so we can use combustion. However, there is nothing wrong with three green because then we don't have to change it later. So TLDR, it's fine. We do want to craft a dexterity roll somewhere. So I'm going to craft dexterity on the turquoise amulet. But first I'm going to gamble and see if we get lucky when we alk it. And in fact, look at that. We got dexterity. So now we can actually replace this. So we are missing frost blink now. Vitality can go over here. So what could I possibly drop for... There's nothing I can actually drop at all. Um, so I can't get Frost Blink. I don't like... Oh, wait. Yes, I can. We're not using this anymore. See you later. Okay. So now we have to go get our gems for, for uh, Fire Trap that I forgot about. So step one, we're going to go ahead and grab Life Tap. Step two, we're going to throw on Fire Trap. Okay. So boom. Like that. Now I'm missing a Transmute which might be a problem. I'm going to hope it actually costs an alteration and a chance orb. I'm a believer here. Okay, so I'm going to go back to library, and we're going to go and buy trap and mine damage, which is a alteration. And then we want to buy swift affliction, which isn't... There we go. Perfect. That was a uh, chance orb. Okay, and now the only problem is that Vitality is getting hit with Life Tap, so we put the Stone Golem over here. That way, Vitality is not costing HP, and we are good to go. Let's continue. Now, the Fire Trap's not going to do the most damage right now, but it will scale, and we don't have to worry about making a swap, right? So I prefer this. Um, we'll leave that on the floor. That is a currency known as an Exalted Orb. It's not worth a crazy amount of currency, but it's worth maybe like 10-15 Chaos. I'm not sure on the early stage of the league. That's something you don't really want to use. You want to definitely sell that. Man, the RNG has really picked up, you know, like, pretty much right around Labyrinth time, I'd say everything started rolling in. Look at that smile. Well, Dude, we were getting so unlucky at the beginning of the run, are you kidding me? So unlucky. Couldn't find any int gear in the vendors, and then by the time I could find it, it was too late? Like, whew. Since when is Exalt 10 to 15C? Uh, since they changed Exalts and Divines quite a few leagues ago. Exalt is like 100C. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? So whenever you find blue life flasks like this, it's actually not a bad idea to identify them. Uh, as long as they're like within your tier of life flask, right? So if you look here, this has like 1K regen, whereas this has like 360, so these are poo-poo. 
You could get bubbling or seething. Bubbling or seething is basically partial or fully instant. So if you're dying, you can tap it. Do be careful though, if you happen to get a flask that says immunity to burning and ignite, that will remove your RF when you click it. Now you'll notice I'm specking points into minion damage and minion health. And your first question is kind of like, well, why would you be doing that? Um, a lot of people make this interesting correlation where they assume that if you have a stone golem out, you gain the benefits of the minion stats. I'm not sure who started this, but this has nothing to do with stone golem. Speaking of which, my golem's dead. The reason we take these minion nodes is by the time you get to spiritual aid, right? Spiritual aid will make it so 10% minion damage is 10% uh, fire damage. That's the easiest way to look at it. So on the way traveling there, it equals to about 11% damage per point. Nothing special, but you also gain 1% life regen and you gain damage in an area of the tree you normally could not access. So this is why it actually makes it smoother to level. Also in the future, there is a way you can craft a entry level weapon for righteous fire by utilizing minion damage essences instead of like say elemental or fire because they don't exist with essences. Essences, if you remember the things we were using at the beginning, higher level essences are much better for crafting obviously than lower level ones because they guarantee a specific stat of a higher tier. Now I'm thinking the only real thing we're going to have to do is probably get Determination on, which is a red. We could drop Vitality at that stage for Determination. So our colors are looking pretty much fine for right now. Right, we're going to just skip that. Okay. Now this boss... It's pretty easy if you're at the point now with the really good sustain. If you want to, like, make sure you're not, like, gonna die, whenever he jumps, just move around. You can kill the abs by walking over them with RF. What you need to pay attention to are these. You see how these are kind of like vomiting projectiles? You want to fight them away from where those, those are shooting. So that's shooting there, so I'll come to this side now. That way you can really mitigate the damage that occurs. Make sure you grab his quest item and then pop back up. Not sure how I entered this area. Okay. What's really nice now is you'll notice I pivoted away from putting pressure on sockets and links on my weapon. This means we can start picking up every single scepter we find. Nice. And as long as we have one blue, it's usable, right? This makes it very nice for finding upgrades. Also just identified a pair of unethical boots there. I saw they had 20-something movement speed with some other... Oh, boy, these are a juicer. Cold res, fire res, suffix open, 20 movement speed. Downside is we have a blue and a red, but guess what? Blue, and we have one jeweler orb. What are the chances I hit three sockets with one jeweler? Okay, two is acceptable. We'll just do that. Look at that. Okay, onward we go. Let's go ahead and yes. vendor this right here. Good luck. Okay. Now we're going to go over to the next guy over here. Make sure your auras are good. Whenever you're removing gear with your auras in it, it'll on it like turn off. We don't need this one, this one, or this one. Now combustion, if you see this here, is actually superior to swift affliction, but I don't want to go through the effort of getting a different helmet and then changing it in 15 levels. Um, the reason why combustion is better is the minus fire res right here also scales your righteous fire. The thing is later on with Chieftain, we end up taking a node that makes it so we don't need to strip enemies fire res anymore. So it's kind of counterintuitive. Now we already threw some unethical items on the floor, friend. But I, I see no reason to just go slower in the campaign, so. Augmentation. I still don't think I've picked up a transmutation. I just want to make that abundantly clear. I'm not sure what's going on with the transmutation situation right now. So that's a 1% life regen node right there. No. 
The filter is showing transmutation shards. It's definitely showing transmutation orbs. Summon Raging Spirits, see you later. And I'm actually, I was going to say I'm going to transmute my Quicksilver Flask, but we have none. So these are both level 4, so I'm just going to replace them like that. We're pretty much just shield charging our way through, skipping most of this. Now that our RF has been linked, we're actually keeping up with the um, increasing level just because it's doing so much more damage. So as we're gliding through with shield charge, we're killing the monsters. If we had blood rage, this would make it even better. And in fact, I have an open green for blood rage. I would like to go get blood rage going. Oh, I think I went the wrong way. Whoops. Oops. Yeah, you want to go up here, not down. Then you got to kill all three of these guys. And then I like standing still right here because the doges just kind of run at you and die. I'm sorry, doggies, but you know, you were evil anyway. And then we just kind of go through. I really like that part. I don't know why it makes me happy. And then put a portal here if you are scared. Now, for people who want to be a little tankier in the campaign, you have access to guard skills in Act 1, like Molten Shell and Steel Skin. You can 100% uh, pick up one of those guard skills, although it puts more pressure on the build. And I genuinely don't think it's needed. You have so much life regen. Like, I could stand inside these blades here, and you just don't even take damage, right? The amount of life regeneration you have at this stage should quite literally trivialize most of the game. I mean, I could probably just stand in his face and not even do anything, right? Just from life regeneration alone. That's how much it gives you, right? He's also attacking the golem, but that's beside the point. Oh, we weren't supposed to ID these. We're supposed to sell them on ID. Yes. Take care. Okay, we have 67 dexterity. We can actually go over here. And we can peak Blood Rage. Probably can't use it because of the dex requirement, as usual. Takes 79. If we find a Regret Orb, which we have in our inventory, you can actually do this to get a level 1 Blood Rage. If you use a Scour, it only goes down by one level. So now we're going to work on our way towards Piety. So I'm going to just put Blood Rage here on Spacebar. If you're concerned about the extra degen, you don't have to worry about using it. One special note about Steel Skin that someone brought up to me. And so in this area right here, you see where we're at in the belly of the beast, you start encountering a lot of monsters that bleed you. Bleed is solved later on in the build as we get through the campaign, but right now it can be kind of spooky. The best way to remove bleed is typically a flask, but nobody is crafting flasks at level 30, so Steel Skin will just quite literally remove the bleed and then give you a little bubble as well. Actually going to be skipping essences for now. I feel very strong. Got to be careful. Do you see these guys on the back there? Those are called Stygian Revenants, and uh, the best way to describe them is they're just overpowered. They summon minions, they detonate their minions, they have very heavy lightning, and they're tanky. 
Sigin Revenants are just very strong. We are officially one point away from getting damage from our Spiritual Aid node. And look at that! Another body armor. So we could try crafting this. But it's kind of early on right now. I don't know. I mean, it's, it is a nice base. It's 39. The same as us. But we might end up dumping the rest of our chromes on that. So I don't know if I feel like doing that. As a reminder, if uh, you are unhappy with someone in the chat, you guys can uh, ignore each other. I don't have the ability to moderate right now, so I expect you guys are uh, being nice to each other. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to be fighting piety here, and we are losing some of our damage. Well, brute, but let's not get above ourselves. Ooh. Yeah, she hits really hard here. Uh, with her auto attacks, so you got to be a little careful. We get determination going soon. You could opt out and have determination already. Got to be careful as well of all these little pods. I typically just like circle strafe and right click. As a, as a reminder again, for the two people who are arguing with each other, and the one person who is subscribed being a little passive-aggressive, you guys don't like each other, ignore and whisper each other. Don't take it out on the chat. We're trying to have a good time here. Okay. Oh. Okay. Now you are simply gorgeous. Uh, these books here, you don't want to tank them. So I typically just move away from these books. You see them kind of like all over the place, right? Like these, I move away from. The ancestors demand it. Okay, uh, Dodre. Dodre is a little interesting. The best thing to do is, you see how I cursed? Don't do that. She will eat the curse, get this purplish glow, and now she does bonus chaos. That's an example of what not to do. Dodre is just a little bit slow as a fight, where it's okay though, you want to just kind of just fire trap her and run around. It's okay if you don't end up using your RF on her, because she's kind of weird. Um, these three circles here are like overlapping, and they basically give you a bunch of debuffs. The most important thing to do is if you see her shoot the multiple projectile like that, use your frost blink and reposition yourself. So, see if she uses it again. And just like frost blink like that, right? I cannot carry this. You are free now, slave. Remember, if your golem dies, you can always resummon it. Here we go, spiritual aid time. So my RF is currently 4K, so 4.4K. We're just gonna put that point in, and now it is 5.6K. Very big. If you want some extra damage, you can even take these two nodes. This guy just does a bunch of purple chaos. Just like kind of run in a circle and you'll be fine. Okay, from here, it's now time for the act boss. So I have no armor. Actually, I somehow have 1k right now. Which is actually not bad. I thought I had way less than this. 
You don't want to tank this guy's slams. They're very dangerous. Okay. So there's a beam here. If you go in this beam, you um you normally get shocked. I don't know what happens with purity of elements to be honest. Then you need to go ahead and kill piety. Move away from the squiggly attack. It's not nice. Don't get hit by that slam. There are little sigils on the floor here if you see them. It doesn't really hurt the build, so just pay attention to that. Another thing that is uh, that's happening is your golem will take aggro a lot of the time. That's the slam, don't tank it. Because your golem is going to have aggro, you have to pay attention to where Malachi is facing. So oftentimes you can kind of just like sit behind the golem, right? Even though you're tanky enough to fight him, it's just easier to pay attention that way on what's happening. That way you don't know, like, that way it's easier to tell if he's targeting the golem or you, right? So I'll give you an example. He's going to attack. I'm just going to move like this, right? Same thing. I'm going to just go this way. So you can see which way either he's facing the golem or he's facing you. So now he switches. You kill this. Then he becomes vulnerable again. Whenever he goes down, he's going to slam. I just dodge with Frostblink and shield charge back. Again, opposite sides of me and the golem. So he's there. The golem is on my side. That means I'm going to blink away. So he is going down to this bottom one. We're going to kill this. He does range projectiles. They don't do any damage to you, so it's okay. Again, pay attention to your golem. I'm going to swap so he's like this. He's going to this phase now. We're going to kill this. There's kind of like some weird degen right here, but the degen doesn't do anything because we're RF. You can see we're tanking the degen, tanking the trap, and tanking the projectiles he's throwing while standing on the ground spores. You're really tanky in the campaign with this build. You just have to dodge some of the big hits like this. All right, down he goes. That's a twizzle one. Okay. We're just going to go vendor everything. Now you get a nice option of ink AoE. You can replace efficacy for ink AoE if you want more AoE but a little bit less single target. The choice is yours. So the next thing I want to do is get armor. So my next couple of levels are going to go into um, mana reservation, specifically for determination. So that's what we're doing next. You can also type slash passives here. Slash passives will keep you updated with all of the side quests that I have done. Do note though that it's going to be a little different here because instead of deal with the bandits too, um, you will now either A, you know, help the bandit that you chose when we explain that in Act 2, but you also get another skill point to make up for that um, in Act 2. So there will be like one more quest for you or potentially two depending on... The Golden Hand. Yep, that's the quest. There we go. Do, 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 do. Shadow Scepter. I'm actually going to identify scepters just because ours is like literally useless. Ooh, crystal scepter. Um, we got hybrid spell damage. Okay. So we're at the point now with our build where we could probably all agree that RF is doing pretty good damage, right? So now we're going to pivot into increased damage rather than scaling flat damage. When we were using Rolling Magma or, you know, Armageddon Brand as your single target, you primarily want flat damage for the hit. Now we're committing to Fire Trap and Righteous Fire. We want to pivot over to damage over time slash fire damage and those sources. So the best way to go about doing this is swapping over full time to a Scepter rather than like, say, a Wand. And then you're going to want to go ahead and craft for uh, fire damage. So that's what we're going to do on this one once we hit 41. We do need two blues, though, 
So we're going to go ahead and chrome this to try to get two blues first. Also, this guy's ghosted. That's kind of rude. There's no reason for that. Okay. That's also a chromatic. Now, this doesn't have anything crazy on it. The only usable affix on this is the hybrid spell damage. But because it's a hybrid spell damage, I know that you can also put fire damage on it because hybrid spell damage is the only affix that is stackable with another increased damage prefix. For example, if this had lightning damage prefix, you can't put fire. If it has spell damage prefix, you can't put fire. If it has hybrid spell, which you can identify hybrid because the spell damage is clumped with the mana, that means you can still craft fire. So what we're going to do now is go to my hideout and we're going to click the font and we're going to click fire in here. You can craft fire damage here. I don't know if we have the 32 craft yet. I mean, I'm 41, it's 32, so I imagine we do. We do have the alteration, so we're just going to click that. And now I'm going to chrome it for two blues. And now we're going to use it. And you can actually see now, you can look at your tooltip and see the damage. So my RF says 4.3k. Yeah. See the 4.3k? And then I swap to this. It's now 5.3k. So you can tell that's a big damage increase. Long dead. We did have higher damage before, but remember, we dropped some of our damage in favor of the ink AoE support gem. So the choice is, there, like, is yours on what you want to do for that. Okay, let's continue on. And we are now going to work on determination. That's going to be these three points. You can go this way if you want, but this way just saves you a point early game. And then later on, I'll go into this. would be wrong to do that here. Yeah, so there's an interesting question that pops up here. Since we're taking minion damage scaling, you do have access to other minion-oriented stuff. I don't really recommend it, though. I feel like you just play it like normal, and if you happen to get an extra minion roll here and there, you use it. I think players get a little too confused and they think they're playing a minion build and want to go all out on your minion affixes. Again, there's nothing wrong with using a minion wand, but just be warned we're not playing a minion build. You just want increased minion damage, that's all. Oops. Okay, grab this. That's another skill point for us. Yes, that's a good point. You can use Essence of Fear on your minion scepter or on scepters to get a minion damage roll, which also can work. So if you see uh, Essence of Fear in the campaign, there's no harm in like clicking it and then using it on a random scepter and then seeing the outcome. The only downside is there's not too much you can craft if you're forcing a minion affix, because minion affix also takes the place of fire damage. Why do you not keep Blood Rage up all the time? Well, sometimes you just don't pay attention and buffs fall off, you know? I'd say that's pretty normal. Normally, Blood Rage is automated because you kill mobs. Sometimes you hit a direction where there's no mobs for like 10 seconds, and your Blood Rage falls off. Very normal. I used to play Inquisitor a lot. Will that work? I personally think that you can play Juggernaut and Inquisitor just fine in the patch, but I do think Chieftain overshadows them when it comes to a League Start point of view. Honestly, majority of the run now is pretty much just going to be blitzing from location to location um i really will only upgrade my gear if it drops with the associated sockets um the only other exception would be you know like if you get maybe you just get like an armor es base that's higher tier you could use some chromes on it if it's four link 
or we find orbs of binding. But mo for the most part, we're kind of just zooming through, picking up different weapon upgrades, but weapon and accessories, that's pretty much about it. Okay, we're coming across one of my most hated bosses. Let's go clear out our inventory again here. Uh, I'm going to take a granite flask here because we have a ruby. Uh, granite is better when you're surrounded by mobs. Ruby is better for sustain, so whichever one you kind of need there is up to you. It's also a pretty nice shield here. 500 armor. Prefix open for life. Decent res suffix. Actually not bad at all. I'll put that in here, and we'll probably never use it. I see. Farewell. Okay, grab that. And now we're about to get determination going, so I'm going to go ahead and just grab this right now. Hello. Be that careful. There. Not running it yet. We're going to run it next level. other belt. So now we have access to determination. So if we look here, we're going to drop some life regen. So I go from 540 to 476. My armor goes from 1.2k to 3k almost. Now determination is going to be weaker in the patch. However, the gear on your armor is going to be stronger in the patch. So I'd say during the campaign, it will, it will equalize. That's not really a big deal. If you want bonus life regen, remember in the patch, you guys are going to have more life regen than me because you have the three extra nodes for max res right here. That gives you three bonus max fire res on me. However, for people who want extra life regen to just glance at the passive tree really fast, you can, for example, come over here, one, two, three, one, two, three at Acrimony. You get a lot of damage there, and then you take less damage taken from damage over time. Alternatively, you can come down here and grab another three max fire res. We pick up those in the... In the the POB anyway, I'm just giving direction for people who maybe want to progress a little bit differently. A transmutation? I actually found a couple now, I have four. That's the first one I've noticed I picked up. Holy. Well, we got to pay our respects back, though. Those are the borrowed transmutations. See you later. Now, Chamber of Innocence here is actually one of the best low-level zones to farm. The amount of monster density here is insane. You'll notice that if you look at my XP bar, it is just surging up and up and up. Also, you'll notice I kind of almost died there. That's because the rare mob we fought shot out this big green pulse. You ever notice that green pulse, shield charge or frost blink away? That's an affix called rejuvenator, and it basically cuts your regen by like half maybe. It's very toxic. It's not really a problem late game unless it's a very scary mob. Uh, but that's just something to pay attention to. Most of the things you can kind of just, like, face roll. Here's another blue pack. Moving on. Guess what? Here's another blue... Oh, it's a baby blue pack. What about in the back? A blue pack. A level up. It's looking beautiful. Hey, a rogue exile. Okay, we're going to leave that on the, the floor for the Lightning Arrow Andes. It's a nice five link for them. I think this is about the time now when I kind of want more HP. Because, like, the build is tanky, 
but the HP is not very high. Um, and usually this is intentional. I don't try to throw in a bunch of HP at the early game, because remember we were talking about before with most of our regen right now is flat, so if we get too much health, it'll start to degen. That's kind of like the situation. You can see my life regen is definitely weaker than it was before, but it's still not bad by any means. Also, at the end of this here, there's always three blue packets. It's, it's kind of crazy. All right. One of my most hated bosses. Here we go. The world must be cleansed. So this guy does heavy physical. You want to just move to the other side of that attack. And just frost blink around and move. And then he goes into a phase here. This is pretty easy. You pretty much just chuck fire traps around and just do whatever you want. You shouldn't really take much damage. He's going to get phased pretty quickly here. Just move to the other side and see you later. Check these new belts. Both poo poo. So, that's a big beam. Uh, it will hurt you if you stand in it, so don't stand in that. Only way you're tanking that is maybe with a ruby flask. Always make sure you recurse him after every like ad phase. Because uh he's kinda of toxic like that. See you later, bud. No Nothing here really matters. We're just going to vendor it anyway. Alright. Onward we go. We're actually going to do a quick... Uh, POB pause and I'm going to stop and then I'm going to go open up the POB and compare it to where I am because like I said I don't follow my own POBs I just adapt based off what I want what I want right now is either I want to work towards acrimony to reduce the degen um, I'm thinking of maybe picking up the max res in the bottom right uh, I'm also thinking of going into Templar for more HP and more AoE those are my, my three things that I want on the top of my head or there's also uh, two points in the tree at the beginning for some bonus life and armor. So those three areas were basically here, here, or four areas. Here, into here, and here. Really, whichever avenue you decide to explore, it doesn't matter because you get all of them later, right? Honestly, I think armor is probably better. I don't know. I think so. I think armor is the way right now. For two points. Let me go sell. I don't care too much about the jewel there. You can take, I think, any of them that's not the Viridian and you'll be okay. You're probably not going to get something usable out of it. So we're going to vendor that. And let's go ahead and look at the POB. So we are currently level 44. So we're going to click this and we're going to use the loadouts for 41 to 60. So in the 41 to 60, this is still the same. You can see I came down here to grab Soul of Steel and part of Bloodless. I didn't get Juggernaut yet. 
Um, I do think it might be better to actually get Juggernaut, but this is not bad because this gives a crap ton of armor. And then this also has Acrimony to reduce the degen, and then it also has the max res. I'll probably just go ahead and pursue it that way. And I'm also going to grab Juggernaut because it's only two points. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Yeah, I like that. Let's just do that. And then I will go here, and then I will go here. Okay. Oh, I somehow forgot that waypoint. That's kind of weird. Oh, wait, that sucks. Wait, wait, wait. I have a portal, though, right? I have a portal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, much better. Okay, cool. All right, that's how. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just came from right here. Makes sense. All right, since we do not need this mono flask at all, we're just gonna go ahead and put on this granite. I don't like less duration, so anything that's not less duration, and then I'm gonna put the ruby flask on right there. Osuary is for... Is this for lab? Right? No, no. That's that's an act... Whatchamacallit? Never mind. The act 10 one. We are hitting dex requirements. I can tell by that on the right there. That is swift affliction. That needs dexterity. Um, that's okay because the max res here gives 10 dex. Like on the way to it. So that's actually like pretty nice. I need to go this way. My mana is gone. Perfect. All right. Now, who is it we need? A Tula? Or is a Tula a skill point, right? I think. Or is it the zone down here? I always forget this part. I play with custom filter sounds. Um, not these ones. I have my own personal filters that I don't share that have custom sounds. What is this zone right here? Ravage square. I don't know, I don't remember. I always forget this part. It's reliquary. Where is reliquary? Do I need reliquary? Is that for anything? My brain stops functioning after Act 4. Gather the three parts. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't do this yet. Yeah, that's the skill point. Okay. <clears throat> that's the skill point. Not um, not Utula. This act specifically, I don't know why. I never remember it. It must have to be because I get it confused with Act Ten. Although it's funny though, because Act Ten, you go this way for. Uh, the Vienna Sausage boss to get a skill point. Okay. <clears throat> Double strong box. What is this?
I don't even eat Vienna sausages. I ate them like one time at my friend's house as a kid. It just stuck in my head forever. Ooh, turquoise amulet, yoink. Could pick up those gloves and try to chrome them for new fire trap gloves, but I'm too lazy. What does this have? A lot of dexterity on it. I'll take it. Oh, oh, oh! Got hit with end requirements for frost blink. Um, okay, we can fix that. No, there's more than that. The base weapon also needs it. Uh oh. Hold on, let's switch that back. Put frost blink back. Okay. Turn on boom, turn that off, and that. Okay. That just means we need a tiny bit more int. That's not a problem because we get int in the north side of the tree. So north side of the tree gives int. Um, so that means I'm actually not going to go to the bottom right first. I'm actually going to go up to get acrimony. Yeah, I think that's the play. So then we're just going to go that way. And then I'm going to switch amulets like that. Okay, there is our skill point. Oh, that's a perfect shield. Let's see. Is it better than ours? Not really. See you later. Innocence blesses your journey. Okay. Now to Katava. I'm not using vitality, so we're gonna take it out for now. I do want more HP, like a lot more HP, but I also need max res, so I'm not sure here. I cannot do this yet. Ooh, let's grab that. That could be uh, bubbling or seething. That's Anger Essence. That's a little bit of fire damage. There was another Hollowed Flask there. You can see this bleed is uh, kind of wrecking me here. I gotta chug my pot. How hard is it to do RF on other classes? If you're following my build guide for Juggernaut, uh, Chieftain, or Inquisitor, you're not really gonna have struggle. If you're doing something without my build guide and you're picking an ascendancy that doesn't have sustain, it's going to be incredibly difficult and frustrating. Okay, it is Katava time. I'm just going to grab Prismatic Skin. I have decided. Move out of the way of that. Gotta be careful for this sweep. I typically just run away, but if it's right next to me, I'll just frost blink out. That's a big degen pool. That's the fist. Ooh, should hit my granite flask there. Granite. Okay. Um, so this heart here, you just pretty much have to hurt it a little bit. Once you hurt it enough, Katava comes back, and then you go back to the next phase. To separate my hair. My hair was getting all clumped up. I had to like separate it. I don't like when it's all clumped up. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. So that pulse, you see the three way pulse attack? That one I typically dodge every single time. Somehow the last pulse hit me there. That pulse is the most dangerous mechanic in the Katava fight by far. 100%. So just pay attention to the Katava Slam. 
So there's the degen. You walk away. Those are also degen. This is the thing I'm talking about. That right there. I think that is indeed the fight. Okay, you have just killed Katava. You are good to go. One of the most annoying things about killing Katava is actually when you lose elemental res. Thankfully, you don't have to worry about losing Eli res with this build because we have so much overcapped res. Because we have so much overcapped res, when I open up the character sheet here, we're still res capped. In fact, we're res capped for a long time. So let's go ahead and continue. I cannot do this yet. On, remember. Do I want to hit a slash played for reference? I mean, people who are watching can see the timestamp, but sure. It would be wrong to do that here. So this quest here in Twilight Strand is going to give you access to a NPC called Lily. And Lily will make it so that you can now buy level one gems in your hideout. This is beneficial if you think of like Blood Rage, for example. Blood Rage is a gem you would ideally like to level. However, the problem with leveling Blood Rage is it costs way more dexterity. It's actually crazy how much you speed up, right? Your act one is like, for me, it's like 30 minutes because of all the explanations and uh, mewling slash, you know, it's just really slow. And then you get into like act two and it speeds up and then you get into act three and then you get your four link and you just, you just take off, man. All right, so we're gonna type remaining and we can see that there is one monster remaining. So if anyone ever played Diablo two, you know that den right at the beginning of the game how Akara tells you to go slay all the monsters, and you think you slayed all of them all, or all of them, but there's this one little rockin' issue who's just kind of walking around. That's basically this right now. So we are looking for that one monster. That one monster. Did I skip him? I think I skipped it. Where are you? No. Where? Where? Where is he? Is it the abyss? It's not the abyss, is it? In the water. Does the abyss count as a monster? How the heck does the abyss count as a monster? What the heck is this? I mean, we checked two times am i blind i might be blind so wait are you telling me if i walk over the abyss maybe maybe the message in the bottle is a secret and it's going to tell us if god wills it there will be one monster remaining for to slay the last monster you must open the crack in the abyss therefore okay got it we got to open the abyss so when i walk over the abyss it's going to say quest complete right But now there's 19 remaining. Okay, okay. We're gonna just clear the abyss. That's what the lore told me. The lore told me to clear the abyss. I must clear the abyss. There is no other way to do it. It's how it it's just how it must be. If it wasn't meant to be, then it wasn't meant to be. I'm not going to rerun the zone. It's okay. What do you mean one more? Like, I'm offended. Okay, one more lap. One more lap. I always get made fun of and people call me blind, but like, am I actually blind right now? Q? 
kill your golem. It's not the poor golem. It, it doesn't exist. Wow. On a side note, if you are also experiencing this issue, all you're going to have to do is go to the zone, control left click it, and recreate it. Therefore, by doing that, you can recreate the instance, allowing you to actually go through and clear it all over again. Now here's a quick example of how to do that. Hold control and left click. Create new. We're just going to go ahead and skip that though. Sorry, the voice comes out when I get a little triggered. There's not much we can do about it. Ooh, a burning damage roll. Unfortunately, that scepter is unethical because that no longer exists in the patch. So, see you later. Farewell. Thought an ad was playing? No, that's just me. Sometimes I decide that I feel like speaking like this. As for why, I really couldn't tell you. So there is one problem when you encounter this zone. It's not really a problem, it's more of something to focus on. You'll notice that these mobs are shooting arrows from the sky. These monsters actually do a crap ton of damage. Thankfully, we are res capped, so it really should not affect us. But do note that they are very angry, especially when we enter the next zone. This is one of the highest damage spikes in the game, especially if you decide to stand underneath the arrow rain. You want to be very careful about this. Yeah, it was actually, we were joking about me doing an overlay for a Righteous Fire audiobook of an entire campaign run. So it would sound something like this. <clears throat> Chapter 1. Righteous Fire. You wake up on the Twilight Strand with a zombie in front of you. Auto attack his ass to get that gem. Make sure you start off with the witch so you can mule rolling magma. See, th this right here is an example, though, of the damage spike. You saw how much damage I just took there. So th this also because there's four yellow beasts. Speaking of which, talking about the beasts, the beasts are actually very ferocious creatures in Rayclass. The beasts are basically like rare monsters with extra affixes that can completely mow you down. For example, here is one of the unique mobs of the zone, and they just fall over and die. A bestiary, on the other hand? No, no. I'm gonna get so many questions on that. You need that voice in a loot filter? Orb of Chaos. Alteration Orb. Orb of Alchemy. A mirror of Belondra. Oh, you can actually, if you find this Combs Cache, you can get really lucky and get like a Combs Heart. There is no way that would ever happen here. Uh, or you can get like Combs Boots. I don't know if they added the restriction, because I, I one time actually found a Combs Heart in the campaign. Barui Chopper. Okay, I'm going to... I don't know what this... Okay, this is a red beast who is just deleting me. We're just going to go ahead and walk through. Those zealot gloves are worth picking up because that's technically colors for RF. So you could pivot there. The reason that's good is you could pivot into a pure armor chest piece and then use gloves for your righteous fire, thus allowing you to get way more armor in the campaign. Way more. And we're probably going to do that, to be honest. I like this. If you rip audio from the VOD and make it into a loot filter, that's okay. Sure, just, uh, you're gonna advertise it and make sure you give credit, you know? You say that all voiceovers were, uh, created by Mark Roberts from GGG, or, uh, Chris Wilson from Grinding Gig Games. You'll notice our sustain is definitely starting to lack a little bit here, as we have gotten a little bit more HP, and on top of that, the bosses are starting to do more damage. So this is pretty much where those max res nodes that you guys have that I don't have will definitely help. The stone golem is also dead. We are also getting more life regen on the tree soon. So prime example, one max fire res into two max fire res.
we are going to start coming across uh, some lab trials again that we are going to have to do so that we can get our next Ascendancy node. A stack of two transmutations. Those are so rare. So just to co like compare, we are still keeping up with the level. Even though it looks like we're skipping everything. Uh, remember that as we're charging through, the shield charge is killing most of the white mobs. Or not the shield charge, the RF. So that helps keep the XP going as you are just going through the campaign. It's very nice. Okay, so complete the labyrinth. We do have a lab trial here. Also, you see these cage guys? These dudes are so tanky when they're rare sometimes. So I will typically skip them in the campaign. Five transmutations. My voice almost cracked. That's how rare that is. At least for this run, not in general. Okay, we well, can't go that way. Let's go this way. Okay. Do, 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 do. Acceleration Shrine. So I want to go there, but I need to do... I don't remember... Does this take us to the next zone? Okay, yeah, it does. Sometimes it, like, is shared and it's not actually the, the different instance. I lost my acceleration shrine now, but that's okay. I just want to go get the lab trial done. So we're going to just go peek in for the lab trial. Where are you, friend? There it is. You can always usually tell by the lore book. Also need to put on a hollowed life flask. We'll do that after this. Oh, I actually have all these three. Whoops. Okay. It's, I guess, the next one that I need. So just kidding. They're actually fine there. I didn't even need to do that. I cannot do this yet. Have you guys enjoyed the run so far? That could have been a five link. That was close. This would actually be worth picking up just to identify. Uh, let's see. 300 armor. I mean, it's okay, but I don't really care. We'll just put it on the floor. Everything's going okay right now. Do, 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 do. On a side note, while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and toggle between all the different RF MTXs since I believe I own them all. And this way you guys can get an idea of kind of what they look like. I'll start with my personal favorite and then go down the list. So personal favorite is Harbinger Righteous Fire. And this is partially because my first level 100 RF build was in a Harbinger League, played as a Berserker. And I always wanted to have the Harbinger Righteous Fire skin, and then they created it. So I was very happy about that. And when I say created, I mean they just gave us the Harbinger RF color. You know, I'm sure it wasn't a lot of work for them, but yeah. Sunplate. I don't actually need this, because we'd rather have a white one and then elk it up. We're going for like a thick armor body.
Next up, we can go in... Oh, here we go. See, uh, you see this circle around the mob? This is called Executioner, and it doesn't allow you to go above 50% life. So that means your RF will degen you to 50%, and then your recovery kicks in. That's a very dangerous monster type. Usually, you kite them away and kind of 1v1 them, but again, when you get more gear, it's not really a problem, since the Chieftain Ascendancy will trivialize most rares. Okay. We are at the boss. So here we go. I'm going to grab two max all res here. And this guy hits kind of hard. Best thing to do is yet again, just kind of like circle strafe. You can actually dodge a lot of attacks this way. And then of course, don't forget your frost blink is instant. So you always want to prioritize dodging with the frost blink. And remember, stay on the opposite side of your golem if it's actually tanking. So dodge your book explosions. Okay, now this guy right here usually initiates with a hook so you just want to move out of the way so there's the hook actually he went to the slam okay is he hooking now there's the hook okay so we dodge that then we could just tank him Is it always slam then hook? I swear sometimes he's initiated with the hook, but I very well. Okay, very well could be wrong. Now we go to, now we go to the next step, which is do not blink or shield charge into molten shell goats. For some reason, GGG does not like to change the values on mobs. So goats, even though we have 79 max fire res in the campaign, we still took half of our life there. Goats are very messed up in this game. I'm actually just going to sell this. Although I could chrome it. Is it better than this one? It is actually better. It Fair gives well. dexterity. We'll, uh, we'll keep this. Oh, uh, let's see if we can get the right colors now. How many chromes we got? 14. Green, 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 red. Okay. And I'm actually going to craft... I guess we just craft life on it. Uh, ooh, we don't have six transmute. Actually, we do. Just kidding. Oh. Okay. And I want to use these gloves, but I need to pick up a new body armor first. Oh, there are the goats again. What is the best thing for RF damage in campaign? Increases and multipliers. Because you lack typically multipliers, so like fire dot multi or dot multi. If you just want to bump your damage. But you also need life. So you need to like... RF is not a build where you can just gung-ho on one stat. You do need to, like, actually build the character. So, life, increase, and multi would be ideal. But if you're just... And actually, the no next best tip I can tell you is watch this video. Because if you watch this video, you'll see how I choose to use one thing over another, explain tooltip, etc. The number one best resource I can ever provide to people is watching the video content. Because I feel that no level of explanation can be compared to how much goes into these. Okay, so next we get this guy, Abarath. I actually hate this boss. So Abarath here, when he gets all glowy like this, he has like crazy damage reduction and kind of like stomps on the floor. That is going to summon a meteor. You want to watch out for that. Now he's going enraged again. Now he ran away. This part's actually kind of funny. You actually get some decent XP. You just throw fire traps as you walk. Look at the XP bar. You do have to kind of move forward, though, because if you don't, then the meteors are going to chase you here and they're going to hit you. Okay, and then we go into the next phase again. Remember, as a trap build, you can actually preemptively stack your fire traps if you want an easier time on the bosses. It doesn't do that much more damage, but it can help people looking to get an extra edge. Whenever he does that thing where you just shine there, he will spawn meteors, I believe, from this way, and they'll start going here, I think. 
Okay, let's identify, identify. All of this stuff is poo-poo. We're just going to get rid of it. Clean out my inventory, please. Thank you very much. Okay. You can also grab Corrupted Blood Immunity here. I'm a big fan of that, so I don't have to worry about that at all. And then we're going to follow the... Is it the road here? No, we go the opposite way, right? Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, follow the road. Okay. Ooh, Blood Scepter. Nope. Am I happy with 4K armor? Yeah, 4K armor is not bad. So I'm going to do something a little different from the POB. My life doesn't feel very good and my sustain feels good. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and just put points into Heart of the Warrior since it's the biggest life boost I can get. Are you going to update your filters? Everything will be updated when I'm able to update them, friend. You just got to wait. I cannot do this yet. So, over here, he is going to be a boss that's actually incredibly dangerous. This boss does a lot of chaos. It's primary chaos, and you don't usually have good chaos res by this stage in the campaign. If you want to get chaos res, you can put points into up here. There is, like, purity of flesh for 8 chaos res, and that's really about it. Not too much else you can get. So, if you die on this boss, don't feel bad. It's a little tricky. The damage spike here is kind of nuts. Step one, we're going to go ahead and run through these little parts. We're just going to throw a fire trap at it. It's going to die. Then next one, same thing. And then right here. Okay, now pay attention to its attacks because, again, very heavy chaos. Never be in front of it. Play defensive. It's okay. We're not super tanky yet against, you know, all these different damage types. If the golem is tanking, that's even better. So move out of the way. You never want to be in front. Again, move out of the way. Watch where it's going. Looks like it's going down here. Frost blink out, and we're good. All right, that should be a bonus skill point for us. Thank you very much. We're going to just vendor those. Farewell. Okay. I am going to put this point going towards Acrimony because I want damage and reduce damage taken over time. And I'm okay with my armor right now. For reference, my armor is 4K. It's not amazing, but it's enough for me. It's enough to tank small monsters. But it's not enough to tank big monsters. Big monsters are way more avoidable than in terms of their damage than smaller monsters, right? So when I'm referring to big monsters, I'm referring to like boss attacks or gigantic looking monsters that have very heavy physical. It's kind of something that you you learn with experience, unfortunately, but that's kind of just how PUE is. What are the main differences from this playthrough and the one on your website? This one just has more info aimed towards 3.25. gonna do this all again on friday well yes friday is when the league launches but i'm not giving I, I still give commentary when i level on league start some like to an extent but it's not a youtube video so no recording youtube i try to do a more um i try to make it just more about gameplay than anything else for youtube because it's very easy to misunderstand things when we don't have the same live reaction kind of right YouTube often doesn't really understand the the banter that goes on with like content creator or sorry streamer and like chat 
So I try to keep like the the Twitch stuff out of it, just because it's it's such a different community from Twitch and YouTube. Granted, when I'm live streaming though, YouTube will have to just accept that if they want to watch the live streams, they're gonna get the unfiltered me, right? But for YouTube videos, I just try to keep them. Maybe the term is just more professional, right? Okay, the King. grab the black flag and move on through the passage. Yeah, it's not really like, I mean, people call it like a persona or they say like YouTube voice, but it's more about when I'm creating content on a video game, the focus is content. So it's not like I'm trying to be different. It's just when my goal is to explain information, I'm just trying to explain information, you know? It's not about the memes and all the other stuff. We're going to pass that because we don't want to use a pure ES body armor. That would make us very squishy. I think we need to go this way to the right. Did I get scammed here? Yeah, we got to go this way. Okay. This is a, there's a massive blue pack in here. Now, what I know some people are going to do is they're going to look at the later gear sets and they're going to say, oh, I notice you're running purity of fire. My elemental resistances are capped. I'm just going to run Purity of Fire instead of Purity of Elements. Don't do that. The problem with dropping Purity of Elements right now is you are no longer immune to shock, which means you can take up to 50% more damage from everything in the game, including your own Righteous Fire. You are vulnerable to being frozen, which sucks because if you get frozen, you literally can't do anything. And being chilled can oftentimes lead to you getting surrounded because you are so slow. Later on in the build guide, we cover this and we use the Pantheon to prevent freeze and then we can modify and remove purity of elements. And then in the later stages, we go block and then we're immune to shock. But nothing to worry about right now. I cannot do this yet. Okay, it's kind of like an escort quest here. You gotta just like, um, kind of like sit in this circle. Interestingly enough, our Righteous Fire Circle is like the same exact AoE as this thing. So most of the mobs just kind of die. You pretty much just, what I do is I just walk forward and throw fire traps for the most part. As you can see like this. is done. Oh, nice. That's a chrome. Hello, everyone. Remember, we are doing very minimal... Uh, basically not communicating too much with chat since this is primarily for youtube it's a nice six hour video we've got going on okay the beacon there's actually something fun you can do here. You can count how many times you have to press Frost Blink to get here. So I did it on my first try. It usually takes me about 97. 
All right. We're going to go ahead and switch to the next favorite, which is, in my opinion, Transcendence. Transcendence is an interesting one because it actually fluctuates with the amount of HP you lose. So the lower your life, the, the more it basically changes. I'll let this guy attack me. Speaking of which, this golem is terrifying. If you see rare golems like this, don't face tank them. Their slam just does like an extra digit on every other mob at this area. So if a mob hits you for 100, that golem slam hits you for 1,000. One nice thing about going for Acrimony early, like I have, is you can actually opt in to get a 30 dex node if, for example, say you, your amulet doesn't have good dex, right? So that's kind of nice about it. Big fan of it. Where is it? over there that's shouldn't be right because the waypoints there usually they're away from the waypoint okay so next act boss this one is a little tricky with its phases, but I will teach you guys some secret tricks here to make it easier. A sumptuous feast for his majesty on his wedding day. Really, we are both so touched by your generosity. So whenever he does that, you want to move out because that thing hurts. So now you'll notice that there is a phase here where there's lightning everywhere and you're kind of stuck in this little circle, right? You can actually port, port back in, take your hands off the keyboard and you'll be immune for the phase. So you can actually skip phases like that if you prefer to not do the dodging. So another example, we're going into the phase. So you just take your hands off the keyboard you can see that there is a grace period. You can skip the whole entire phase if you want to. For players who are concerned because it's a little too difficult, you can always kill the boss with just your fire trap and not even use your RF. And if you do that, you're going to have a life buffer of 500 life regen per second just to make the fight easier for you. Skill points to pick up here? No, right. Farewell. Clearly. The black time oh. and tide wait for no man. Huh? Fare you well. Okay. Let's go ahead and swap our MTXs here. I don't actually know which one do I like after this. I guess Lightbringer. I don't know. I kind of hate this one now, though. It's so distracting. My eyes actually just started burning out of nowhere. Holy. I cannot do this yet. Do, do, do. I feel like this one looks way better when you have bigger AoE. Because it's less distracting on the center. But when you have no AoE, I can't see anything. <laughs> it's actually funny how that works. The bigger your AoE, the more visual clarity you can almost have sometimes on the direct center of your screen. Oh, 
need to go fix that up. Now we need to go down here to the Fell Shrine Ruins to show you where this is. We gotta go this way to go pick up an item so that we can continue later. Also gonna start killing just a few more guys to keep make sure our level is keeping up with everything else. So anytime we encounter a blue pack, we wanna stop. Anytime there's a big pack of mobs, you throw a fire trap. And you just kind of continue on. So Coliseum Plate is actually a good base. And it's, eh, it doesn't really have any armor rolls, so I'm going to pass that. Remember, we want to swap to a pure armor body because we have these gloves. And my current gloves give like 40 armor, so it's not hard to replace them at all. In fact, they quite literally just have, like, nothing. So they're very easy to replace. Okay, here is the sarcophagus. Now, before we go there, I don't remember if the lab trial is before... Okay, here it is. So your lab trial is right there, so you want to go ahead and do that. What is the earliest you can run RF? Act 2. That's when you get the gem, and then that's when you can run it. Typically around level 20, 22. actually pick up the shield because uh we could chrome that easily okay okay so 60 life 400 armor reduce damage taken from crits suffix open for fire res i want that shield so we're gonna just get one green perfect beautiful i love it and we're just gonna screw the fencer helm we're gonna leave okay so we're gonna go back to our hideout and we're going to craft fire res for extra life regen here. Uh, I do have three alks, so I'll just do this. You probably shouldn't do this in trade league, but it, it's just an alk. It doesn't make that much of a difference. And speaking of alks, why not alk our current pair of gloves we're waiting on? Dex life regen? Okay. Prefixes open for life. Six transmutes, we got that. Can't use it yet. We need to wait for our new piece. So I'm actually gonna just put them in the crafting bench and then I'm gonna forget about them and then you guys will have to remind me, okay? So now we're gonna continue on this way. So the main thing that we need to switch our body is literally, or our gloves, is a new body. Primarily a body with red, red, and blue. Shouldn't be that hard. One of them does need to be linked because we are using flammability with life tap. However, what's nice is we're actually getting ready to do our next labyrinth, which is Cruel Labyrinth. And in Cruel Labyrinth, we actually switch from flammability to punishment. And the reasoning for that is the ascendancy node. We'll explain when we get it. So we are trying to get right there to Silk. And the same exact logic applies here with Chamber of Sins, where the portal, or sorry, the, the exit of Chamber of Sins is going to be basically the way the portal is, right? Could be some cool gear there, but I don't, we don't really need it. Let's see, let's go this way. Wow. This way for sure you can go. No way you can't go this way. Hello to you, great dream. Okay, so you put in the Malagaro map we got from before. And then we're going to go kill another kind of toxic boss because they are primarily chaos.
Oligaro should be somewhere. Okay, here we go. So I'm putting down my portal. Okay, so dodge is a little slam thing. You just walk out of the way. If you want to tank it, that's okay. That's a triple shot thing or quadruple. You can tank it, but you shouldn't. This spawns an ad. You just kill it in like literally five seconds. And then he spawns. So be careful of where he's... The main thing is you don't want to tank the like miniature ad with the boss because that's kind of rippy. So that one you just move out of the way from. Then he spawns the next one over here. Right, Fiddleitis, then same thing, just move around a little. Oh, it's always a good idea to never stand still. Even though we're playing a tanky build, when you don't have all your defensive layers, it can be rippy. When he goes into this next phase, he does like this little, I don't know, shadow clone attack. It doesn't really do anything. And then he dies. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and talk to Silk. He's going to trade that bottle for the key. We now have the key and we can go this way. Now, once you access Chamber of Sins 2, you can now do the next um, lab trial, and we can ascend after this. But that's exactly what we're going to do. So here is the, the lab trial right there. We're going to go ahead and skip and just keep going. We actually get some really nice power creep soon because we get a lot of skill points. this okay that was bad so the, re the reason i knew that was bad is if it had a roll it was below 10 percent or below 20 percent on fire damage fire damage multiplier and i had no plus the gems on it that's relevant for us so if we take a second look at this it's cold damage cold dispels accuracy light nothing good on that so to replace our current scepter we would want something with damage over time multiplier plus the fire gems or just a higher percentage fire damage. There is no more burning damage. So right there, that's when I would typically run Cruel Lab if I'm around level like 54. If I'm not around 54, I'll just get some XP. And the main reason why is because you get some nice upgrades. So basically going from right here and going to the next zone, we get another skill point. So there's no reason to just not be a little stronger. Now we just got a cool RF hel helmet. Is this? Primnor's him? Yeah, okay. So this is actually a good RF helmet for campaign. This gives you a nice chunk of armor. It's 600 armor. will be buffed in the patch. Also gives you percent fire damage. Um, so this is just an insane helmet. Unfortunately, a little too insane for the campaign run. So RIP those two bosses. We're going to drop the helmet there so that they can kind of look at, you know, what build killed them and they know next time they died to an RF build. It's a pretty nice leveling helm. We're going to go ahead and switch the MTX now to something else. So I am going to swap over to Divine Righteous Fire. Divine, I think, has the best visual clarity when it comes to seeing your minimap. Now you'll notice blue scepters are still dropping. That's because it's actually like on the filter. It's actually worth it to pick these up and identify and hoping to hit a fire multi-roll or a dot multi-roll as those are suffix and a magic item could have a suffix and a prefix. So if you end up identifying damage over time multiplier, you can just craft fire damage and you have a good weapon. Acrimony, so that's our big damage node. For reference on numbers, I do have Frenzy Charges right now. Our RF is 11.2k, and our Fire Trap, since I haven't shown it yet, we just care about the Burning Ground on it. The Burning Ground, if you pay attention here, does currently, I think it is about 10k. Now, this guy has a big windup, if you saw there. He does this, like, little power thing, and then he throws, like, five or six consecutive spears. Don't tank that. That's really the only thing to pay attention to. Majestic Plate could be our new body armor. And it has tri-res. I mean... I don't know. I'm kind of picky. We're going to wait. I mean, we could just make it... I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for something else. So we're going to we're gonna go ahead and go back. We do get to claim at least one skill point here. Maybe two? I don't, I don't remember here. For sure one, at least. Okay, there's a skill point. 
Okay. Perfect. So let me go ahead and vendor. Oh. Uh. Sure. Yes. I thank you. No movement speed. No thank you. Keep your life. Vendor, 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 and see you later. Right. What you can do is just look through the shop here and see if there's a nice, like, heavy, like. Okay, well that's uh that's already like magic, so we don't care about that. That's also magic. Um there's no other pure armor, so we're gonna skip that. Life to your own. Okay. Now we grab less damage taken from damage over time. And we are gonna go send. Ascend with precision. A little bit under leveled, but we should be okay. We got about close to 2,000 health. I'm pretty confident here. This does mean you have to be a little careful, though. It means that the monsters you fight in Labyrinth are stronger than the ones you've been fighting just going by the level of them. So here is our first oh, trial. Let's see how it goes. Traveler draws it is the soul the end when the power of the scepter, not the other way round. Now this has fonts. What that means is this is gonna reduce my damage or my, my sustain. So I'm gonna kill this first. And then I'm gonna kill him. Now this means that I do have two fonts on my head. It's just you part of the way it works. Remember, this part's random and I can't like predict what it's gonna be for you guys. Um, so now I'm going to have actually temporal chains on my head and vulnerability and we're under leveled and we don't have 2k HP. So mm, kind of made a mistake there, but that's okay. It's always fun when uh, it's a little more difficult, right? What I should have done there is waited for those fawns to spawn and then kill them because then they would not persist into the future fights. And what I'm talking about will make a lot more sense when we come to trial number two and I will show you. The load times are crazy. If you also want to get faster loading time, consider checking out an exclamation mark Starforge PC. This PC runs so fast, you won't even notice that it's running right next to you when you go for a run too. That's right. I cannot do this yet. You have no money? I mean, you know, just uh, start cooking your own meals and uh, buy a Starforge PC. Okay, we got trial number two. When the time comes to strike, an so you see here, fragility applies vulnerability, to and then over here, to dance with this the one is temporal chains. That's going to be kind of bad, one but we'll be okay. The effigy. One defiles the emperor. This next one is, uh, I think we just have to. I don't actually remember how this one. Oh, that's just conduits. I don't think it matters. Strike with fidelity. I'm just going to click that now. Actually, it does matter. I think we're going to give him extra damage now. Oh, no. Yeah, I think... Oh, I think he has extra fire and extra cold, but I could be wrong. Empires are forged in stone and fire. Also, be careful of these things here. They're uh, kind of not nice. Using. Armor actually does not affect lab traps. Uh, percent physical damage reduction will.
Okay. Not sure what the hell just happened there. Just a reminder to make sure that your golem is alive. Okay, so we gave him bonus cold, bonus fire, we take extra physical, and we're slower than a turtle. Alright, we got this, no problem, let's go. You must navigate your empire through troubled waters. This is big power creep after this, I'm a believer. Failure is an illusion. The best way to do this... Is just pay attention to why oh actually we're also getting bled so now i have no life last charges that is actually so dangerous yeah like right now because of vulnerability holy crap that actually could have been a legitimate death okay anyway though moving on we're just gonna pop everything here i like to click this first to make sure that in case you crash you do get that saved so you have your point and then i am you know, I forgot about those gloves. I'm just not used to seeing them so small in there. I forgot that your crafting your your crafting table and your hideout is linked to the same one in Labyrinth. <laughs> you remember these gloves? I remember them. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just add quality to our RF. This will give us some AoE. So I'm going to do that. Can I put my gloves back? No. Okay, well, fine, dude. I just, I just want to put them back, dude. Okay. Yeah, so now we're going to go back to the hideout and we're going to put these gloves right here. So now at this point in time, we have the ability to switch our um, to switch our curse. Now, I wanted to have a pure body armor by this point, and it seems like that's not the case. So we're going to go ahead and check and see if there are any body armors available for us here. In fact, there is a golden plate. If I can just get a few more levels, um, I'm going to buy this for... Do I have a transmute? Yes, I do. Okay. And that would be good, but that's... Can't use that. Let's go ahead and quality it up. Where are our armor scraps? And we got an elk, so there we go. That has 100 armor with some life. I could prefix... Okay, I can't put any prefix, unfortunately. But I can put a suffix of fire res. So first, let's go level... And then we'll go see what happens. It would be wrong to do that here. Also, our next lab ascendancy, we are gonna take Ramako Sun's Light. This makes it so you never, ever, ever have to use any any form of minus res. Ramako Sun's Light makes it so when you stand still, and I know standing still sounds weird, if you stand still for even 0.1 of a second. All of the mobs go to minus 20 fire. This is actually such a good feeling for damage over time builds because you don't need to ramp your damage. You just literally pause for 0.1 of a second and you're at full damage. Now, what I mean by pausing, I literally mean if you throw a fire trap, you're stationary, right? If you use your curse, which we're switching to a punishment, you're considered stationary. If you get stunned, you're considered stationary. Right? A lot of these things, there is a very tiny, tiny um, point where you're stationary. And later on, as you get more and more gear, uh, what's going to happen is all you're going to need to do is be stationary for the tiniest amount of time. And you will end up triggering these explode chains, which will not happen in the campaign, but in the later build they will. I think I want more life right now. So I think we're going to go for more life. Life and then Soul of Steel later. I think that's the play here. So what do we have here? Summon Stone Golem and Life Tap. Well, actually, now that I think about it, I can actually just teleport to Act 3. And since we're not using Vitality, I can pull the Stone Golem there. What is it? And then we can just grab vulnerability here not vulnerable sorry punishment punishment slap that on and we no longer use flammability now the reason that we are using punishment 
is because since we do not scale off of minus resistance anymore, we have limited sources to actually scale our damage. Punishment ends up being the curse of, cho of choosing to scale our damage. Basically, when mobs are at 50% life, they start taking way more damage from us. And that's because punishment only kicks in when they're at sub 50% life. However, so like, see this rare? Okay, well, I'm about to die from, from all of those lightnings, but yeah. Whenever they're at sub 50 life, they take way more damage. What's also nice about this is now, if you notice mobs that were fire and ignite resistant, that no longer matters. Later on, when you get to rolling your maps, you don't have to worry about mobs getting bonus res because they cannot get bonus res as long as you are standing still. Okay, that right there is another skill point for us. I'm actually going to put this point into uh, right here going towards Purity of Flesh because this next boss coming up is Chaos Damage Oriented. Okay, grab the waypoint. I'm going to go back. And what we're doing now is we're going to collect fireflies for that NPC right there. So collecting fireflies is from the side area over here. This is the northern forest. Where is it? Did we miss it? Is it actually down there? I think so. Let's go back there. I cannot do this yet. I mean, this is everyone kind of does this in a different way. I mean, I guess not everyone. I think I'm the only one who's weird. I always skip this, and all my friends call me a loser for it, and then I laugh at them. It's actually something that was so funny. Whenever I do, like, uh, campaign runs with, like, group of friends, it's actually so interesting to see how differently everyone goes about the campaign. Like, genuinely, I don't care about a lot of stuff, but I go off of muscle memory. So when that muscle memory is interrupted, you're kind of just like, huh? All right, so this boss does a lot of physical damage. So what we're going to do is pop our granite flask. And you see these little, like, ghosty wisp things? You want to move away from them. But the boss will die really fast anyway. So now you need to collect seven of these little fireflies. You don't have to worry about counting because by the time it's finished, uh, or sorry, but when you pick up the last one, it'll give you a prompt and it'll say like, you know, turn them into Yina, I believe. Okay. Ooh, it's a lot of blue mobs here. Okay. Now we poured out. I'm gonna grab a skill point from Whalem. Always keep your eyes on the horizon. I think this the bear we killed gives us that skill point. The and then we turn in this to Yina. Good. So now looking at the tree, you can grab Dex node. You can come over to explosive impact for AoE. You can get two points at minion damage. I never spec jewels in the campaign. You can go into Templar for a ton of life AOE all res. I'm a big fan of Templar. Um, or we can come down and grab like Soul of Steel and Bloodless. This is probably by far the tankiest avenue. So just because it's what I recommend, I will go down here even though I'm obsessed with AOE. Soul of Steel is a nice area because it also gives you plus one max res, and plus one max res helps offset RF degen, but not just that, it also offsets enemy degen, um, because if it is, basically if it is um, elemental, you're taking less from it, right? Also, I forgot about this, when we killed the bandit guy, Groose, remember the guy who I told you throws like the 
uh, multiple spears. He's over here in, I think it's, is it Ashen Fields? Ashen Fields. You actually get access to this mastery right here, or this, sorry, pantheon called Ralakesh. When you take this node, you no longer worry about bleeding ever. You still have to worry about corrupted blood, which we will automate later, but now you no longer have to worry about bleed. This actually would have helped me massively um, in the labyrinth we ran. There are also other gems you can use in the campaign. I just don't like to force a lot of socket pressure early on, right? So some other things you could do is incorporate a war cry. Uh, Infernal Cry does still have explodes on it. We thought that it was removed in the patch, but they clarified. So Infernal Cry can be used for extra clear if you want, though it doesn't cover an ash anymore. Enduring Cry is going to be, in my opinion, the more obvious choice. It will generate endurance charges for you, which actually make you take less damage from RF since endurance charges are reworked now. So that would be probably the best thing is enduring cry. That means you need to have another red socket available. And a lot of this stuff is just not needed. So I kind of just wait until we're in maps and start getting better gear uh, before I start incorporating usually a guard skill or something, for example, like uh, a war cry. Enduring cry left mouse button. I don't call that quality of life though, because it's interrupting my gameplay by micro stuttering. I can't do that. Well, this will scepter. Not good. Doesn't have any dot multi, fire multi, plus gems, etc. We get Soul of Steel to buff up our armor value. That is a lot of chaos damage here. Okay, so here I just move away from how it's facing and don't be in the little X checkerboard. Remember, this boss has chaos damage. It's going to hurt you. So when it goes down, just pay attention to where it's popping up from. Start pre-casting your, your fire traps. And then remember, at 50%, it takes a lot more damage from punishment. You can see here, I'm just moving to the side. And the boss is already dead. Onward we go into the next act. RF gets a lot of hate at endgame, which I, you know, I understand it's not the highest damage build. Nobody really talks about, I mean, I guess the new players do talk about it, but the experienced players never talk about how good it is in the campaign. Right? It really does trivialize a lot of content in the campaign. I think it's a really nice, like, early powerhouse build, for sure. Holy, what the heck is this? Oh, we're just gonna better it anyway, it's fine. 
Why am I not using this yet? Why am I not using this? We're gonna craft fire us here. Put an elk. We got an elk. Sure. We are going to look at our defense. So we currently have 6k. That puts us to 7.3k. Then we're going to take these gems and put them into our gloves. And we're going to swap the gloves here and then put punishment and that over there. Up 1% call it bad, but for T17s and bosses, a new player will not do T17s and Ubers. A new player does not do T17s and Ubers, period, unless they play an unethical amount or are way above average the regular player. Like, what? yeah, that's, that's my opinion. My mana is gone. I think that way less people do Ubers than people realize, personally. I also think RF will be stronger for T-17s in the, like, reasonable budget range. Way less people make it to red maps. Yeah, or get four void stones, etc. That's why whenever, like, newer players are looking for a build, like, I mean, you can tell people, like, RF is not the best bosser and stuff, right? But if you're already getting to that point... You're, like, so much further past the community than you realize, I would say. Ooh. Sockets. I cannot Skill points. Yet. Holy. I think there's also a big difference between when people say like RF they say RF cannot boss, but that that's like that's a lie. It's just slow. There's a difference between like RF doing something very slowly and another build literally hitting like a wall because they're just designed purely for mapping. They have no sustain. They're entirely based on their flash charges, right? So, okay. So over here, but I'd say that's also just because a build is not well constructed sometimes. Dodre is an interesting fight. Um, there's going to be like three different things that can happen. So basically, you attack the boss here and you pay attention to your stacks. Uh, sometimes this can be a regen check. So you can kind of just see how good your sustain is and not do anything. When you get too many stacks up at the top left here, you click this and you purge the stacks off yourself. Uh, I forgot what each one does. I think red or purple make you take... I think purple is slow, green is you deal less damage, and then um, red is you take increased, I think. So just pay attention to those debuffs. I also usually go right here. Uh, right gets you earlier access to skill points, and you genuinely can skip most of the left. Or one one zone of the left. Make sure you look for the, the bridge here. You need to pick up this onk for a skill point. Return to the dirt.
Can you repeat the tip on the zone? So there, there is an onk you need to get. And if you don't get it, you have to backtrack the whole zone. You look at my map layout, you'll see that there's like a random bridge here. So I typically explore all of the bridges until you find the one that leads to a zone with the onk. It's typically in the beginning of the zone when you enter it. And then I think this takes me to the next zone, and I think this takes me to the skill points, I think. Let's see if I'm right. So this should be right here, okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is the resurrection site. Uh, this guy has like some weird form of detonate dead, so as always, just drop a portal if you want to be safe. As a reminder for everyone who's adding me for questions, I'm not really answering chat questions right now as we're doing a YouTube recording for the entire campaign run. Feel free to communicate with users in chat as they also play a lot of Righteous Fire. That is done. That is a skill point for us. Okay. So now we need to go back over the bridge here. Oh, thanks for the reminder. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, that just makes it more league start realistic. We were so close to a waypoint. Unfortunately, we crashed, so it does happen. I think I crashed because I was looking. I was going to switch my MTX. I opened cosmetic and then I crashed. Okay, so we'll swap over to... Celestial. Ah. It's okay. We will just hold our breath really fast and zoom to the end. Where is this taking me? Is this taking me to the next zone? It's a strange layout, because you can also go up. Surely this is taking me to the next zone, right? Right. No, this is where... I've been here. This is where What's-His-Face is. No, I haven't been here. Grain crate. Okay, that was a weird one. That's a strange zone. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and hit that waypoint. And now we get Soul of Steel. Check our armor. 8.3k. It's now 10k. All right. So over here, this zone has my favorite mini boss in the campaign. A trick for this one, you want to go the way where the dead corpses are. I know normally that means stay away, but you want to do that here. So no dead corpse. Where's the next dead corpse? Dead corpse. Okay. When you see that lore book, you know you're at the next mini boss. And my favorite thing about these guys is the following. Fire trap for you, one 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 for you. Okay, that's plus one skill point for us. Let's go ahead and redeem that real fast. Tell me something. 
bring me back something you know. Why are you still right. standing there? I think we got didn't don't we get another skill point from uh yep. Watch yourself. That's plus two. We're gonna work on bloodless now. Once more, goodbye. Yeah, you follow the dead corpses. I guess corpse implies that, but yeah, you get what I mean. I cannot do this yet. Now we wanna just go through. And we make it to the Imperial Fields. Imperial Fields, we are just going to follow the road. And the road will take us to the next mini boss. Oop, gonna grab that. Uh, the road kind of ended, and I always get lost, so I'm just going to keep going in this direction. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now, there are two things you can do here. The ideal thing is, before you get to level 2 of the Solaris Temple, you find the waypoint. So, we want to look for the waypoint here. For chaos. Local. Major aid. Uyen's nice. He actually gives currency. He's, he's worth doing, I'd say. Nothing over there. Aha! Got the waypoint. Okay. So now we're going to continue and look for floor two. Really only stopping for blue packs now. Uh, at this stage, I, I even rares you can definitely skip. Rares are worth killing if you want loot, um, but basically if you can't kill the, the target and within a second, a second and a half, I would just skip it. And the main reason, it, it's not about efficiency, is that for me, the core fun of the game is past the campaign. So it, it's less about being efficient and more about me getting to the place where the game becomes more enjoyable, right? I can't really customize my character in the campaign or fit in all the sockets in my gear, or interact with all the league mechanics to the capacity I can. So that's why I do this. You'll notice I have a very different approach where I don't have the campaign memorized because the more I do it, the more annoying it'll get, but I still have enough knowledge to get through it quickly. So I kind of have like the in-between, right? I don't try to speed up my campaign time. I just get to a point where I'm comfortable doing it quickly and then I just kind of stop there. There are loads of tips and tricks you can learn uh, from other content creators like Tai Tai, for example, on speedrunning the campaign. So this guy, all you really have to do is not stand in the Scorching Ray. If you want to stand in the Scorching Ray, you can just flex on him and hit a Ruby Flask, and you'll probably out-sustain his damage. That's why the campaign should only be done once per league. I'm okay with doing the campaign multiple times. However, I, cannot do this yet. I would not be inclined to a alternate leveling method, but I don't think an alternate leveling method will fix the problem people think they have. I genuinely believe that if you were to remove the campaign from PoE, people would go to the next thing and start complaining about it, which would be rolling maps. Now, I think that for sure a large amount of people would be happy, but I genuinely think the majority of complainers would just pick the next thing, right? I think this is a common trend in free-to-play communities. For me, what I like about the campaign, because I don't focus on the super crazy hyper late game of builds, for me, the campaign is a great time to measure how my build feels how the skill feels. It's just, it's not too bad for me. I don't really mind it. I will tell you an example of when I don't like the campaign. Since I pri primarily play league start builds, my builds feel good in the campaign. If I'm playing some really strange build, like say I'm playing, I don't know, an occultist armor stacker utilizing uh, a bow. Why? I have no idea. 
That build would make no sense to level, so I would be leveling with a random skill with random leveling gear. At that point, I'm not feeling the progression of my character. I'm just waiting to get to X level, and then I don't enjoy the campaign, right? But when I play a build that genuinely starts very early on in the campaign, I enjoy it a lot more. Since I primarily play Righteous Fire and League Star builds, I don't mind it as much. And I know this because I used to hate the campaign. I used to despise it, and then I, I took a second look at it and really was wondering why. And that's kind of why. Also, I played a lot more hardcore back then. And then the campaign was just a pain in the ass because you had to have, you know, specific checks by specific bosses. And it's okay, again, with the League Start builds. But when you're playing a build that's kind of whack, it just doesn't... It's strange, right? Do you think Lacerate Glad would be a good League Starter? I mean, from what everyone's saying, uh, Bleed is going to be in a great spot. So I'm going to... Off of other people's opinions, I will say yes. Okay, so now what we've done is we've basically just come from the Solaris Temple and we zip all the way across here. While we're at here, we're just going to look for the Lunaris Temple now. And in Lunaris Temple, we're going to get the next part. So we found the Sun Orb, now we need the Moon Orb. You'll notice my gear is primarily the same gear from Act 3 or 4 when we acquired our 4-Link. For example, well, I guess not. We did upgrade our helmet and we upgraded our gloves, so I guess that's not fully true. But you'll see there, there's not really much gear upgrading at this stage in the game. It's mainly for me right now, weapon, accessories... Three percent fire damage. That granite flask is definitely worth picking up. I'm just a little lazy. Another nice thing about strong boxes with this build, you saw what I did there. You can actually preemptively throw your fire traps at it then pop it and then your fire traps will simultaneously pop off and then they'll just pretty much kill most of the stuff there oh, pretty nice also clicking sulfite is always worth it even if your sulfite is full because there is a divination card that can reward you 10 alterations just for clicking those it's a 1-1 one, one turn in meaning you just need one card to get 10 alterations gonna be. Depends on when I finish the campaign. Okay, this guy is actually a little spooky. He has that attack, and then he has a like a drawback, and then they do this like crazy fire attack. Are they gonna do that? No, no, that's the same thing as the other one. Okay, well, see you later. Okay, grab this and pour it out. Now, you can actually put these together and fight the boss, but before we fight the boss, we got a few more things to do. We got a skill point to claim, and on top of a skill point to claim, um, we have a lab trial to do. So I'm going to go from the top side here. You'll notice I'm completely skipping the Grand Promenade, and we're going to go down from here. I 
I don't do this yet. This takes us to the bathhouse. Now, inside the bathhouse, there is a waypoint. There is a location we are trying to get to, which is here. And also, there's a lab trial. So we want all of those. Okay, here is the waypoint. That's the Grand Promenade. That's not where we want to go. That's there. So we're going to go the opposite way here. Hey, this is a side quest. I think it gives you a jewel. I never do it, so I don't really know. I swear the lab trial is always right here for me. Right here. I don't know. Every single... This is like the one zone where no matter how many times I do it, the lab trial's always in the same spot. I have no idea why. Then we go here. And then we go back here. Okay. And that's done. So I forgot I already did my lab trials here too, so we don't need to do those either. Okay. Okay. Here is the High Gardens. Now, if you're in Hardcore, be careful about this place. This place is notorious for ripping players because, because of these porcupines right here, these guys. Um, this is a great time to make sure you hit your Granite Flask whenever you are running into porcupines because we will kill them very quickly and they will explode on death. Porcupine should be a map bomb. I think uh, areas inhabited by animals or whatever. Is that still a thing? That should be porcupines. Or chance to be porcupines. be available on YouTube after the stream. It does take some time to render, though, like a, a, a long video like this in HD, so... So, during this fight, there's a lot of, like, stuff going on basically you kill these ads there's a lot of these little water droplets so just move around you'll be a lot tankier to this in the patch because of the new max res and just kind of dodge around this guy does a lot of damage like see the degen there he is very spooky so don't be scared to just kind of run and kite him this boss is known as yugal i don't know why but sin kind of says it like that and i do too okay click that and then we want to switch our Pantheon here to Brine King. And don't worry about all the red text, that's just because it's something else. We wanted to get this on actually whenever we killed Brine King, which was much earlier on. This prevents you from getting chain stunned. Okay, and now we are gonna go and finish up the act. I have not have wasted so much stone on these sisters. These bosses are kind of spooky, so here's the TLDR. That boss drops comets on your head that kill you, so don't die to those. This boss right here is not scary unless they jump up, so now they jump up. There's a checkerboard attack that's going to happen. That checkerboard attack sends you to standard league. Don't get hit by it. Are they going to checkerboard? Okay, we didn't get checkerboard. All right, watch out for the moon. Be careful. That's the checkerboard. Checkerboard plus the rocks. You're gone, dude. Granite Flask can help carry since there's a lot of heavy physical damage here in this fight. Okay, moving on to Blood Aqueduct. 
Now we're going to take this up a notch with the speed. So I'm going to go ahead. Pretty happy with everything here. We're going to go break in. Before I go into Templar, I want AoE. So I'm going to grab Explosive Impact. And now we're pretty much towards the end of the campaign here. There is no more gem rewards. So it's quite literally just going through. So I'm going to just kind of zoom my way through. Do note that on this zone, anytime you have a side area. So if you look here. There's like a little side spot. There's always a guaranteed blue pack at the end there. The guaranteed blue pack is very nice for XP. Also, this zone in general is a good zone to farm if you're trying to catch back up on levels or if your, your gear is not amazing or anything. It's just a good zone. Be careful of the Stygian Revenants though as they're very strong. So over here, there will be a guaranteed blue pack. Kill it and then we zoom across. Okay, so just a quick check on our stats for people so everyone can compare. Let me just first go over here. We are currently rocking with no frenzy charges, an RF of 14.6k, a fire trap of 16.1k. My defenses are 80, 78, 78. You guys should be three max fire res uh, higher than me. 10k armor, life regen 713. I cannot do this yet. Also, for people who have been donating and subscribing, alerts have been turned off since this is a very very long recording for youtube i will go over at the end and thank everyone for all their support Sometimes you'll notice gems highlight with red on my filter. Um, the reason they highlight with red is it means that they are used for plus one gem recipe. The simple way to explain this is if you go on my website at pox.net and you click crafts, look at one of the early scepters and it will all make sense. Okay, right over here we have a chest. We just gotta kill all the mobs here. We gotta leave here. Whenever you're surrounded, hitting your granite flask and your ruby flask is the best thing you can do here. I'm gonna go into foothills. Oops, a daisy. There we go. waypoint now i gotta go to the boiling lake so just to confirm this is where we are right now did actually forget the waypoint in the desert so what we're doing now is we're just running over to this little boss 
Uh, this boss has a, a funny attack here. They basically have this skill where they petrify you, but even if RF is petrified, you still do damage. So you don't have to worry too much about it. It's pretty simple. So let's see. It should be right over here. Gets this way. Okay, there's the boss right there. So just basically look at it. Move out of the fire, right? Cross blink to the other side. That's the that's the whatever I was talking about, the petrify. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and turn some stuff in. You Okay, so sure. is this shield better than mine? I mean that's pretty good. Let's misclick. Be careful. Okay, talk to Sin, talk back to this person. We get the bottled uh the bottled storm here. So I'm gonna click foothills and we're just gonna go backwards. I don't know if this is actually worth it. Yeah, let's see. Okay, now we're at the desert. The reason we're doing this is for a bonus skill point. So there's the waypoint. I'm gonna just ignore it because this is the skill point. Now, if you guys are old like me, archaic and ancient, going completely gray, then you'll know of the song uh, Shakira, Hips Don't Lie. That's what actually this boss is named after. This boss is uh, in memory, you know, of uh, Shakira. So let's go ahead and go fight the giant scorpion. Which is located right here. This here is uh, Shakira. So basically, you gotta just pay attention to the boss, move to the other side. The only thing that'll probably one-shot you, and it shouldn't, is the slam, which I will show in a little while. No, they're not They're not dead. I just meant because I'm old, right? I mean, I have no idea. I don't keep up with them. Do your hips also not lie? Uh, my character is too thick. He doesn't have hips. So this is kind of annoying because there's quicksand everywhere. If you notice what I'm doing, I pretty much just walk and throw fire traps with me. The, the reasoning the reasoning I do this is so that it just kills all the straggler mobs. Doesn't thick mean you have big hips? I mean, it definitely does, but marauders are a different type of thick. They skipped hip day, you know? Okay, so here's the attack I was talking about with the slam. I'll tank it for you just to show you it's this right here. Don't get hit by that. That's bad. So to dodge that, you literally can just move to the other side or use your frost blink. So again, frost blink away, and that's the slam. Remember, Frost Blink is very nice because even if you get slowed, Frost Blink does not care. Also, do you see this weapon, how it rolled 26% cold damage over time? That, if that was fire, absolutely 10 out of 10 use that would be amazing. Okay, we're going to go turn this in for a skill point. Perfect. And now we are going to go continue. Okay, inside the tunnel is another lab trial, so you want to make sure you go ahead and get this one completed. There it is right there. I believe it's always before the waypoint. I could be wrong here. So I think we're walking towards the waypoint right now. The waypoint's popping up in five, four... The three, there it is. So there's a waypoint, and it is before down here.
All right, touch the waypoint. Now we got two ways we can go. Doesn't really matter which way you go first. Essentially, we need to go get a bonus skill point, and then we also need to go to the refinery. So we're just going to peek. Okay, this is the skill point. Speaking of which, link. So this one does like a lot of windy stuff. You can face tank this boss, it's not a problem. You don't want to stand inside these though. This is the only problem is standing in those. So we kind of just move away. The stone golem for some reason is just so tanky. Um, so yeah, we just, just walk away and everything's okay. Same thing, I think they're going to go invis, and there they are. Excuse me, boss, can you stop trolling? Thanks. Okay, Platinum Scepter. This is our RF weapon. Um, I mean, technically, it 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 is better than ours. Because it's so bad, though. The only thing going for this scepter is like mine. It has hybrid spell damage and cast speed. Cast speed just quality of life for punishment, so it's not really worth me trying to recolor and socket and link, etc. So let's go grab our skill point. And we are breaking into Templar now. And now we are going to go back to Query. Into the refinery. This boss is actually super rippy I cannot do this that we're coming up to. And again, in regards to the skill tree, the pathing, like if you decide to, to do different pathing than me, there is nothing wrong with it. The biggest thing to understand is just making sure you grab those few reservation nodes so you can run your 250% and still have a little bit MP left in case you don't have everything life tap. That's like, I would say the number one most important thing and then, of course, just the early, early part when you're trying to get Righteous Fire going. Another Ruby. Okay, so I'm going to put a portal here. This is the boss. So pay attention to his attacks. He does have this one, like, weird pulse slam attack which is gonna happen right now. I don't know what that is. I just run away from it and throw fire traps. And then I just re-engage and that, that as well. And then you're good. And that, you have to be careful. There's a delayed aftershock at the end. None of this should kill you in one hit, but it's just things to pay attention to. Now we go back to the quarry. We talk to Sin and we go inside the belly of the beast. Uh, Jun is also known as Betrayal. These are super worth doing. I'm going to give you an example of why. So when you do an encounter like this, and all you have to do for this specifically is run to the end and kill the guys. Don't don't pay attention to anything else. So run to the end, see that green icon? You're going you're gonna to just kill this guy. So run around the circle, you know, don't die. Kill the other guy who spawns too. Keep up in your flash. These are going to be way stronger than most things you fight. So now all that matters is if they're three star or two star. Well, basically if they're one or two star, get them to three star. If they're three star, you can just interrogate. You get a chunk of XP. So you see my XP here, 47%. That bumped up to 51. Now you end up finding gear that has this little squiggly line. And all that matters about the squiggly line is that the squiggly line guarantees a T1 roll. So, for example, if I were to unveil attack speed here, okay, we didn't, but still, you can see like 40% double damage, trigger a bunch of accuracy. These are very strong because what they can do is they can make a shitty piece of gear turn into an amazing piece of gear. So, a prime example would be 
maybe you unveil life on a piece of gear and now you know the gear has life and then you can craft a resistance and then maybe it's it still gets all the other effects so i would say betrayal is the best entry level way okay then i'd say betrayal is the best entry level way into getting some starting gear without having to learn how to craft anything man Crashing is horrible right now. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. What if I told you every time I've played RF, it's different? Do, 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 do. Rotting core. Hail. We are closing in on the end. Into the core. Okay, let's go shop first. Doesn't really matter the order here. into the arena now this chevron you don't want to tank that ball that ball just periodically hits really fast that's a slam i think so you move away from it she does something like that okay i don't know what that was actually okay that is a spooky hit that's the slam then there's that again you don't want to get hit by that okay into malagaro Again, a chaos damage boss, so kind of spooky. But it shouldn't be too bad. Oh, that actually poisons. Interesting. Try not to tank the slam there like I did. There's the slam again. Dodge the purple stuff on the floor. Into Dodre. I don't do this yet. Okay. Dodre is kind of a weird boss fight for us because you see this totem? What happens is Dodre goes into this form, and you're supposed to hide behind the totem, but if you hide behind the totem, your RF is going to kill it. So, just go face. Okay. And now we get to fight the Depraved Trinity, which basically has attacks from all three of these guys. So, step one, fight. I like to yet again kind of circle strafe and sort of stay away from a lot of these random attacks. Okay, now these scorpions have insane physical damage, so I like to put a bunch of traps on me, press the granite, and then watch them die. Don't stand in that poison little that puddle right there. Move away from the books, cross blink to the other side, get away from the ball, go back in and engage. 
keep up your curse. Again, it's add phase, so get your fire traps down. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and curse. Very good. Okay, back at the boss, I'm gonna bait a ball. There's the ball, blink to the side. Okay, shield charge through, frost blink to the other side. Out of the purple, don't stand in the red. Okay, we are done. You've done yourself proud today, exile. Devotion. You there, exile. Explain the ball bait. Uh, it's just Dodre likes to shoot balls at you, and if there's not a ball in the arena, there's a good chance they're gonna shoot a ball. So instead of like being melee and then having to back off. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's just basically just pay attention to, to the ball. That's really about it. You just got to pay attention to it. Um, also, now that we're in this zone, you notice I skipped a rare there. You can find these things called Katava Heralds here. And the Katava Heralds do insane damage and are insanely tanky. So be careful. It's these guys right here. When you find a rare one of those with really bad affixes, they are very spooky, so like this guy right here. This one just has hex proof and charge removal. So he would strip your endurance charges and strip my frenzy charges when he hits me. He's not that scary, but with the right mods, they can be terrifying. I'm going to do something a little different, and I am actually going to go tackle Merc Lab, very underleveled, just so I can kind of show you guys the explodes, because I usually will do this right before Katava, but I want you guys to get to enjoy the explodes. So, first thing I'm going to do is just... I guess I'll just go do it right now. So, normally, you would have to... Actually, no, 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 it's, it's right up here. It's right up here. There we go. Let's see. You gotta just go over here to this waypoint, and then we'll find Ossuary. Here we go. And then inside here, you get your last lab trial, I believe. So we're gonna go ascend. But first, I'm gonna do it the, the nice way. I gotta go to my hideout to use this. I paid for it. There we go. All right. 68. So five levels above us. Okay, we got a golden key. Golden key means we gotta go this way. Or golden door it means we gotta find the golden key. Where there's a golden key, there must be a golden door. Zaro's got some good quotes. Do, 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 do. One other thing Where to pay attention to. It may be advisable to not run Blood Rage just because you take extra degen inside lab from the lab traps, right? Like you basically, there's just a lot of forms of degen going on. So if you are running Blood Rage, consider not running it just for this. With possibility. That's a soul eater, I saw that. They eat your souls. No thanks, see you later. Eat someone else's soul. I cannot 
do this yet. For players who struggle with navigating Labyrinth and want to take things a little slower but more precisely, there is a website I can plug for you called PoE Lab. If you just Google it, it'll pop up. It'll basically have an updated lab tracker for every day. Um, so it will show you the like optimal layout for people who enjoy that. What do we have? Um, lieutenants. Lieutenants, I don't think really do much, so I think we can just do whatever. No two battles are alike. Gonna move out of the way of that. We're gonna pay attention to Stone Golem. I'm gonna pop my Ruby Flask in the pot. Okay, looks. Move out of the way of that. We should be going down. Such there we resilience. Go. Only one of your lessons was completed, Ascendant. Okay. Next. Oh, uh, that's a sub-physical ghost. I don't really like seeing ghosts here. I'm very underleveled. Go away, please. Stop it. Go away. Bad. When the time comes to strike, an emperor strikes without hesitation. I don't think the lieutenants matter, but I could be wrong. What is this? Uh, gargoyles. So we're going to wait for all of these to pop up so we can charge and kill them. Basically, by charge, I mean we kill this like this, and then it doesn't buff them because I don't want them getting buffed right now. So we're just going to play it nice and safe. Pay attention to where he's attacking. Just going to kill the lieutenants. Uh, oh, shit. There's another gargoyle deal over here. Okay, that one's dead. Now we just have one more gargoyle. We're waiting for him to get the beam. If it doesn't get the beam, then it just basically takes no damage. Okay, he's got one gargoyle. Unfortunately, killed him with dot, so... That's okay. So he gets two guardians and a gargoyle. This run was kind of long, but it doesn't feel long. It feels like a... I guess it is kind of like around the same time. Okay, here we go. So, two of those guys, and then one gargoyle. Alright, here we go! So pay attention to this first hit. We might need a frost blink. Okay, he didn't do anything yet. Okay, frost blinking out of the way. That just teleports you. Pay attention. Frost blink out of that. And again. Alright, nice. Is more dangerous than the journey. Okay. Step one, always click that to ascend. And then I'm just going to go add quality right here. Where's our RF gem? Quality gives you extra AoE. It's pretty nice. We are going to get our explode node right here. 
This explode node is the big, big, big heavy lifting of the build. When you look at the POB and you say, excuse me, Mr. Pox Kappa, why does your build do no damage? The reason is because Chieftain does damage and it carries your entire mapping experience. The more you scale, the more that explode that one shot the rare scales. That is actually kind of like the end game of your build, is scaling that explode right there. So you will constantly see it kind of proc. That literally does all the heavy lifting for us. RF is kind of like the trigger for it, and Fire Trap is just the best single target we can get. This makes it so players don't actually have to invest a lot of currency to make their build feel strong, and the reasoning for that is because the explode just has such crazy base damage. So it's a double-edged sword. It takes a lot of currency to scale into way late game, but at the same time, it takes no currency to get to late game, right? So it really depends on like how far you're going with the build. I know that kind of contradicted itself with how I said it, but that's kind of how it works. One of the big things you'll see on my stream if you watch me play is you'll notice that the explodes are igniting. So the best way to make your explodes ignite, first off, we get some ignite already from the tree. We get about 25%. Later on, we'll have a weapon craft for another 20%. If you want to make it feel like your explodes ignite more, you can take a 20% ignite node here. That will help until you get a little bit more ignite chance. The next thing to do is incorporate some form of ignite proliferation. If you look at the later gear sets in the POB, look at the gloves. If you notice on the gloves, it specifically has a line that says ignites you inflict spread in an AoE. That is your bread and butter. You can also get that on a cluster jewel called Fan the Flames. You can also get a pseudo version called Barracks Respite. It's a ring. Although the ring is not necessarily the same, it still elevates your clear. However, do not mix and match these. You do not need anything more than one source. You also don't want to use proliferation with ignite spread. If none of that makes sense, just wait till you get higher level and it'll all make sense in the POVs. Oh, density. I love it. So good. Ooh, binding. Oh, I just wanted a giant circle. What the heck is this? No, no, no. No, 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 dude. Uh, this guy does very heavy physical. Don't tank the swipe. Uh, blink to the opposite side whenever he does this. And then dodge that. Forgot how much more tanky they made this guy. It's okay, soon 50% punishment kicks in. There we go. So, careful of the beams. And do not tank that guy. If you're in a situation like this, just let your stone golem like tank. Holy shit, there we go. Let your stone golem tank him, because there's no reason to... Put yourself in danger. Okay, and we're gonna pour out. The I'm gonna skip Remember. everything there. With we Penance Mark back on the new ring, you do not need Fire Trap for single target. In my personal experience of using Penance Mark, the mobs don't spawn as close to the boss as I would like, and I don't really enjoy waiting for the proc. It works. It's just not for everyone. I cannot do this yet. Thank you. 
Ok. So over here, we're going to a boss I like to call Vienna Sausage. It's in the control blocks. Uh, this boss does award us with plus one skill point. Sausages are pretty foul, yeah. But I ate them as a little kid and I like them. Actually, I ate them like one time and I liked them and then I just never got them ever again. So that's probably why I think about them. Okay, this boss does a lot of burst damage. So you just need to be a little careful. It is pretty much all physical. Don't stand in these beams as they are a very heavy physical damage over time. Then he does this little phase where he jumps in the air. This should not kill you at all, so you shouldn't really have to worry about it. You can dodge it if you want. What's more concerning is when you kill these mobs, they send a projectile to where you are standing. So if you get hit by that with the boss at the same time, that could cause a problem. If you're going to tank him, just pop your granite flask. It gives you very insane amounts of armor at this stage in the campaign. So again, next phase. Another balance. Alright. Boss is a lazy or lady. Yeah, but he, she, they, it, etc. Okay. Okay. I'm never gonna get all the pronunciations right. That's life. Not pronunciation, but like they can't really tell what is what in Path of Exile, in my opinion. Because if you pay more attention to like the lore and stuff, you can. No, I think it's unfair to complain about that, you know? I, I grew up with everyone mispronouncing my name my whole life. I didn't say anything about it, so I play my card. We are nearing the end. Yo, what is the side zone here that I didn't do, by the way? What's it called? Have you ever read the lore? Nope. No idea about any lore in PoE. Well, that's not true. I know about some lore. Okay, I forgot all of it again. Fine. Never mind. Come on. Reliquary. Oh, okay, Reliquary. What's Reliquary for? Is it just skill point or uh, respec? We are close to Katava. Will you pop more mobs when we get more ignite chance? Uh, I mean, the explodes will be more meaningful, and in general, in maps, there's a lot more density than the campaign, so explodes will happen much more frequently if you've watched any of my gameplay. It would, it would make sense. Okay, here we go. I shall strike you down. The last roadblock before maps. So when they breathe fire, move to the opposite side. 
uh, on the heart here, you hope for an explode proc because it like almost insta gives it. It's actually really funny if we get one. Oh, like that. See you later, heart. Okay, watch out for the pulse. There's the fire breath. We're going to move away. I'm just going to throw an ad at the mobs here to get them out of the way. One, two, three, out. Okay. Careful of that. If you stand in it, it hits you. Or it's like kind of random. It hits around it. And here, just dodge the red shit. Again, get rid of the ads because they do a lot of damage. And then for this thing, if you want, you can just sit on it and just wait for the mobs and hope and explode procs. It's really funny, right? I'm obsessed with the Chieftain Explode. The rare mobs are very strong that come out of here, so be careful. There's nothing wrong with running two life flasks for this fight instead of two Quicksilvers. There's no reason for two Quicksilvers on the boss fight. So for this, you can Frost Blink over it or outrun it. Do not shield charge through it because you take damage. There's the Fire Breath. We're going to stand on the side. Just kind of throw traps everywhere here to kill the adds. Okay. Remember to recurse every so often. Watch out for the shades. They lower your regen and they hurt you. Dodge the red shit. Go back in, but don't stand in the shades because they degen you. Okay. Then I'm going to go get ready for the heart, but watch out for the degen. Okay. Let's see if we get a nice explode here. Oh, see you later, heart. The campaign run is over, my boys. So we are at... Oh, it's like a five-minute run. Or five-hour run. Okay, not including the mule. No wonder. I thought it was... Okay, that's way faster than I thought. Okay. I do, 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 do. So now, um, since we're at the end, we're going to go and talk about a few things and explain it. We're going to go to Oria. Does he have a full platform fire breath? No, there's always enough space on one corner to survive. Uh, like, you can always, like, fit in one of the corners, 100%. Why do I not show Ignite Explosion in full DPS for the build guides? Because it would be wrong to do that. that's not really advertising the build correctly. There's, there's already a problem with too many people shoving random things in their config and showing multi-million, or like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million builds, uh, damage builds when it's like not correct, right? For freedom. So if you type slash passives here, you can see all of the skill points I have. 24 is what you would normally want, but remember with bandit changes, you'll be 22 or 23, right? I think in my head, no, 23 or 24, there we go. So I'm actually going to go ahead and start running. Uh, I'm going to run a map here, assuming it. Do I have a map tab here? Do I have a map tab? Uh, I know I do somewhere. Let's see. I'm blind. I can't see it. Help. Oh, where is it? Ah. Oh, no maps. Uh, uh, are these legacy maps? Well, that's all I can find right now. So we'll go run a legacy beach map. Here, Ek has maps. That's the trail. We... Oh, I guess I have, like, T2 maps, too. But let's go run a leg... Okay, yeah, we'll leave we won't run the legacy map, then. So I'm going to explain kind of what I would do now in a league start scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and, like, open this map here. Now, my atlas is, like, already fleshed out. So the problem is this is not a good demonstration because you don't have 100 points in your atlas. But the goal is when you're in white maps, you want to, A, make sure you kill the map balls. When you kill the map boss, right, what the map boss is going to do is it's going to give you a point. Uh, then you can use that point anywhere you would like on your atlas. So here is a boss fight. All right, this is the uh, the boss here. If you get lucky and you get an explode proc, you one shot your boss usually. And if not, if you get an ignite, it's definitely one shot. You can't rely on it all the time, but I would say it does happen quite frequently. So killing him would reward a skill point. If you want to know how I continue to progress my Atlas, I highly recommend you continue watching content on my YouTube as I do specifically have a video covering my League Start. 
Anyway, for more information past this, you guys know where to go. You can check my content out on pox.net. You can go ahead and check my stream out at twitch.tv slash pox. I stream every day but Sundays. Or of course, you could just wait for more YouTube uh, content to come out as during PoE League starts, I typically dump a lot more content than usual. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. If you guys enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box on Sundays. Catch you guys all later.